I've played three.
Hello and welcome to the Women's Candidates and it's round six and we are inching closer to the halfway mark. I'm International Master Ivan Gahowska and I'm going to be your host and it's a pleasure and a privilege to be commentating all the action alongside one of the most creative grandmasters I know, Grandmaster Ben Feingold. Ben, wasn't it a dramatic day yesterday? Yeah, we thought there were going to be some decisive games and really interesting games. And it looks like the defense um, showed out yesterday since the players who had worse positions were able to somehow draw the game. So we had the first round of all draws, which I guess is my fault because it was my first time commentating. So today we're going to reverse the curse and have lots of decisive games today. But they did provide us with a lot of action, although no decisive results. So checking out the standings, that means everything is unchanged at the top. We do see Tan Zhong Yi, she is still in the lead with three and a half points out of five. Alexandra Gryashkina there on three points out of five. And there, are, there is a three-way tie between Katerina Lagno, Vaishali and Nurgil Salimova. But for those players on minus one, well, they need to start building some momentum. Him, right Ben that's right it's not it's not too late it's pretty early in the tournament still we haven't reached the halfway point yet and sometimes at the beginning you're not doing as well and anybody can catch on fire especially in this event with such interesting players you can win several games in a row and get to the top of the standings pretty quick so I, I don't say anybody's the favorite right now I want to be in Tan Zhongyi's shoes because she's in first place but of course, that can change when the day is over and there's so many more rounds left. It's going to be really a really exciting finish. Yeah, I can't wait to see how these middle rounds actually start to go because we are on round six and let's check out the pairings. And there you can see Vaish Charlie will be playing Katerina Lagno. Humpy Kanaru will be playing Lei Ting Jie and Tan Zhong Yi faces Anna Muzichuk, whereas Nurgil Salimova, she takes on top rated Alexandra Goryashkina. So plenty to play for. Ben, which one of these matches are you most excited about i'm actually excited about all the matches but if i have to pick one it's going to be salamova gorichkina because it's the lowest rated player versus the highest rated player and both both sides are going to want to win their game um so this will be a really exciting game uh with i think a lot of tactics i think the players like exciting chess and i expect this game to be super exciting well, there you can see them on the camera getting ready for their encounter. And remember, as always, that you can win prizes by voting on who win before every round by going to each game on the FIDE Candidates and FIDE Women's Candidates event pages, find the social tab and pick your winner. Go.chess.com slash candidates votes. You only got a couple of minutes before the games start. So remember, vote to win big. Oh, that is exciting. It's unpredictable. It's been full of twists and turns. And there we can also see on the camera, Humpy Kaneru against Leiting J. Leiting J riding her luck a little bit in these last two games that she's played, but perhaps she will be able to turn that luck around and actually score some comeback wins. Remember, she's also on minus one, as is Humpy Kaneru, after Humpy lost to Salamova on round four. Both these players eager to get to the halfway point. And there we see tournament leader Tang Zhongyi. She plays against Anna Muzichuk. Anna Muzichuk, she has not been so lucky these last three lap rounds. Three winning positions. And there we do see a handshake. But will she manage to finally? finally win a game and there we see d4 what are we expecting from anna and she opens up with d4 d5 now anna tends to play the Grufeld defense which begins with knight to f6 or i've even faced her dutch defense which is when black plays f5 but there we see d4 d5 knight f3 i'm expecting knight to f6 keeping it flexible and indeed anna does play that and now what will Tan Zhongyi play? C4? C4 is the most likely. Oh, wait a minute. What did she play? E she played E3. Ah, E3. 
I've played E3. Um, boy, Anna Muzichuk looks like she's in a really aggressive posture. She's sitting forward in her chair and really high up and seems to be dominating the board already. Um, and it looks E3 is such an uncommon move. I think um, Muzichuk probably wasn't uh, expecting that. And now she's going to have a little think about what variation she wants to play. Um, and it's funny because for somebody who plays other openings like the Dutch and the Grunfeld, it seems like that uh, Tan Zhang Yi was, was ready for D4, D5 because she played very quickly. Yeah, this is uh, Tan Zhang Yi has played E3 before on occasion. I've seen seen it in her counters against Lei Ting Jie, but it is very seldom. And I'm sure this is not what uh, Anna Muzichuk did expect. E3, is she going to go C5? Is she going to go G6? The questions. And remember that when it comes to seconds, we do know who Tan Zhongyi is working for and working with rather mm -hmm. in this event. That is uh, the American Grandmaster Jeffrey Zhong. See, I learn something new every day. You know, if Muzichuk really does play the Grunfeld a lot, then I would I would expect her to play G6 here, try to get some kind of Grunfeld type position if White plays an early C4. Yes, but this is where the mind games begin, right? Because mm -hmm. that's what they would have predicted that uh, Anna would go for that G6 setup. And so they might have something up their sleeve against it. Perhaps it's a do. But uh, either way, I'm very curious. It could also involve ideas of going B4. I've seen that one also in operation. If mm -hmm. Black were to play G6, I played it myself. B4 with the idea of just storming on the queen side with C4, even A4 at times. I wonder whether Tan Zhong Yi has prepared something like that. But Anna, definitely the one slightly surprised. She's the one pausing and I love these moments because I feel the candidate is, is not just about the chess. It's also about all those mental preparations that one does off the board and trying to anticipate what your opponent is going to play, trying to understand their style. And do remember that these players will have been preparing for this event for months. That's right. And imagine like the day before or the day of the game, you do, you know, a couple hours of preparation for your opponent. And then on move two or three, they play something you didn't look at. And fortunately, that happens so often that you shouldn't get, you know, confused by that. But you still have to take some time and try to figure out what line your opponent wants to play and what you should be doing against that. And you know your opponent prepared for you also. So if you play something unusual and they faced it maybe one or two times in their life, they figure that's what you're going to do that you don't want to do that again if that's what they've been preparing. So there's a lot of mind games going on in the opening where you're trying to play your preparation and not play your opponent's preparation. And the psychological battle begins very early in the game. Yeah, totally. And okay, well, Anna, taking a think, perhaps we go back to the bird's eye view and have a look at how the other games are continuing whether we are going to see some surprises there and ooh, i see some players have played a lot of moves others have been surprised so where do you want to head to let's look at let's look at the uh the marshall gambit type position because the, the game with vaishali and lano yeah and uh, okay so maybe we go from the beginning and mm -hmm. see how this this occurred and it was E4, this is what I expected from Vaishali, but I was curious whether Lagno would play the Sicilian, but no, she decides to go for E5, Knight F3, Knight C6, and now the Bishop comes out to B5. In a, yesterday's game, we did see Vaishali also go Bishop to C4, but now Bishop to B5 played, she goes back to her trusted Rue Lopez, and after Bishop to A4, Knight to F6, castles, Bishop to e7, Lagno does like to put her bishop on this square. Uh, rook to e1, b5, bishop to b3, castles, and yeah, this is is this is this is a marshal, right? This is C3. just a regular straight up marshal. Yep. 
<laughs> oh, well, one of the things about the Marshall these days is so heavily analyzed that it's tantamount to a, like a very complicated draw offer. But I'm kind of <laughs> curious to see what what the players have up their sleeves because it's so seldom these days that people allow the Marshall. Knight takes That's D5. right. Aha. So and D3, this, this is your, your secret illegal prep. <laughs> Yeah, and here it is. Yeah, because knight takes e5 takes us straight into the marshal, mm -hmm. and that's been played many, many times. And as I mentioned, quite forcing, quite scary lines. But instead, d3. And according to this database, not played too often, just uh, 28 games. And here, Katarina taking a pause. And the most popular move, according to my database, is for Black to put this bishop out to g4. Second one sense. is bishop to f6. And uh, another one is just simply to go bishop to b7 and say, hey, I'm still giving you a pawn in the middle of the board. Yeah, this is very interesting. Maybe this is a time when Vaishali gets to steal Prague's uh, 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 prep but probably not. Uh, it's funny to play bishop c4 on move three and then play an unusual move in a Rui Lopez the next game. It shows you how much preparation the players have. And it seems like Vaishali was ready for the marshal and wanted to play this unusual line and like try to win the opening battle if she spent a lot of time on this. And obviously, if d3 has only been played 28 times, and I'm sure knight takes e5 has been played thousands of times, then black may not be familiar with this move. It's so unusual. So totally. this is why we see a big think from uh, Lano in the in the beginning of the game, because d3 is such an unusual move. And a lot of players, as you pointed out, they like to avoid the marshal by playing an early d3 or a4 and just get into normal Rui Lopez positions. Um, so it's funny to allow the marshal and then not take the pawn on e5, that's sort of a new twist. Yeah, there we saw h3 being played. We saw d3, mm -hmm. a, a4, as you mentioned. But And I remember in round three, I was doing a commentary with Judith. And Judith was saying, no one plays c3 these days <laughs> because of the marshal. <laughs> and lo and behold, c3 is in fact played in this game, d5. And uh, no forcing lines for you today. Vishali tells Katarina Lagno, and again, like you called it, the mind games are in full force here because bishop to g4 is the most logical move, right? Pinning yes. and not really winning, but I do like the phrase <laughs> pinning and winning. So that would be what you expect. But what does Vishali have up her sleeve? Is it just simply after bishop h3? sorry, h3, bishop, h5, g4? Is it something as crazy as that? I mean, if I was playing the marshal with black, I would be happy to sacrifice the pawn and have my opponent push their kingside pawns like that. So I don't think I don't think black should be super worried about that. Yeah, yeah. I, Normally, I don't then... want to lose a pawn, but I've already sacrificed a pawn that wasn't accepted. So right. Right. And I, again, but the database is confusing me, Bam, because no one is getting to this position and going knight to d2. Everyone is going g4. Wow. No, okay. Yeah. So it's interesting. Yeah, maybe interesting knight d2 moment. runs into, runs into knight f4. Yeah. Yes, yes. Into f4. So... What could be the idea if you don't go G4? Let me just run through the G4 line because I agree on mm -hmm. first sight, this looks weird as anything. Knight takes E5, Knight takes E5, Rook takes E5. Are they arguing that this Bishop on G6 isn't as well placed as a Bishop on B7, which would cut across the board? Whoops, mm -hmm. that was a weird arrow. <laughs> yeah, the Bishop obviously would be better on B7. And in fact, I think Bishop B7 is also a reasonable move instead of Bishop G4. Yeah, just play bishop e7 now. We're the commentators. We just just move the pieces where we want, and then we get a good position. But yeah, yeah, that's an interesting way to, to accept the pawn sacrifice by ruining your king's side, but trying to misplace the bishop on g6. Yes, and 
Yeah, this is a, a strange, strange position. I, I would be very, very uncomfortable playing this type of game with an open king. But we've just seen more chess. Mm -hmm. We saw Anna Mizuchuk do this against Leiting J when their counter. She was quite willing to go G4, just weaken up her king in order to get the play. But yeah, going back to the main position, bishop to b7 indeed played, mm -hmm. trying to get into martial territory. And Vaishali says, no, I'm not playing ball here. A4, destabilizing this pawn on b5. And then the question is, do you defend this pawn on e5 or do you, do you just continue? I like bishop b7 because I like the bishop yeah. on the diagonal. Yeah, I'm not sure because I don't I don't like bishop f6 because I don't like the f6 square for my bishop, but I don't want to give my pawn away forever. So at some point, if white doesn't take the pawn, I'd like to keep it because black's pieces are so nice. But I'm, I'm worried bishop f6 will run into like knight d2 to e4 and I might have to lose the bishop pair. Yeah. Knight d2 to e4. That's all definitely a concern. I think also this bishop on f6 doesn't make an impression as you as you pointed out. Uh, yeah, it, there's no kind of harmony. But then, if you're not defending this pawn on e5, then what what is Black doing? Yeah, that's a good question. Black has to get some activity uh, before White develops all of her pieces and has a has a slight advantage. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's so, it's so unusual for white to take on D five and then not take on E five that, you know, this is, this is some good home preparation, I think, to get position you're familiar with that your opponent's not familiar with, even if the engine doesn't say it's better for white, as, as Judith pointed out, these lines are usually equal anyway. So you might as well get an equal position where you've studied it and your opponent hasn't. So this is a tough position for black if she's not familiar with white not taking the pawn on e5. Totally, totally. Again, you know, because do you go rook to e8? Do you, is it knight f4 an idea? Or I'm just worried about it being deist, undermined with d4 as well. Mm -hmm. So, ah, uh, maybe needs must. And I can see that everyone in this particular position has been playing bishop to f6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not clear how black should go forward. So at least bishop f6 saves the e-pawn. Yeah. Ooh. Well, very interesting wrinkle there in the game between Vaishali and Lagno. And Lagno now just pondering on how to continue her attack, or potential attack rather, or will she develop, defend the pawn on e5? Maybe we go back to the bird's eye view and have a look at some of the other games. And there we can see, well, we do have, uh, I, I can see something unusual happening in Humpy against Leiting J because Leiting J, she doesn't play this type of setup and she's been working with uh, Timur Rajabov. Mm -hmm. And Timur Rajabov is an expert on the King's Indian defense. Sure. And take a look at that. There on the top right corner in green, we do see that Lady J, she has gone for the King's Indian defense setup. And Humpy played the very unusual move, King H1. So this must be her preparation uh, for this event is to play a move that Black isn't going to be familiar with. Um, King H1, very rare. I've actually seen it, but. It's, it's probably one game out of every 300 or so. Yeah. And what's to stop Black from doing the normal plan, which is to retreat the knight, either to e8, to d7, and then just prepare for an f5? Yeah, that's typically what Black would do here. Black can also consider playing knight h5. Um, mm -hmm. And that's that's what Black is thinking about, where to move this knight. Uh, so I can I can prepare the move f5, and the king h1 is is so unusual. Uh, it's basically saying it's your turn to move, and I'm going to base my play based on what what move you're going to make. Uh, and 
I guess the king is a little bit better on h1 than g1 because sometimes white even plays uh, rook g1 and g4 and tries to stop black from playing f5. Um, but yeah, it's, it's such an unusual move that I think the players are going to be on their own soon. And again, this is more of a psychological move. Um, black is going to be really well prepared in the main lines, as you pointed out. Rajabov, one of the world's leading authorities on the King's Indian, is her second. And King H1 is something that is so rare that you wouldn't expect that it, they've even looked at it because it's 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 not played very often. And it reminds me of what Vaishali is doing by not taking on E5 and the Marshal, just trying to get your opponent out of their prep and and start playing chess early with something that you've looked at that your opponent hasn't. Yeah, no, I, it's it's a good it's a good philosophy, right? When you've mastered an opening so well that you can kind of you can weave around a little bit. You can play these offbeat moves like king to h1. And I was thinking maybe the knight can even come to g knight to g1 just to unravel. I'm not sure what the knight is doing on g1, but I like the fact that there's a square available for mm -hmm. a piece. So yeah, Leighton J now thinking and she has that decision to make is she going to go into the main kind of setups knight to e8 knight to d7 is she going to go king h8 has also been played according to the database knight to h5 also another move and a5 is uh, something that i've also seen in order to secure a c5 square for the knight decision time for lei ting j and this is where experience i think would well, familiarity with the opening will start to count. This, this is uh, bad for chess coaches because you're a chess coach, you're looking at these games and white plays king h1 and then black plays king h8, let's say. And then your student says, could you explain those moves to me? And you're like, um, uh, and sometimes that happens in the opening when people do unusual moves, uh, people who are getting coached they want to know why these moves happen and unless you're familiar with it and you've played it yourself it's hard to explain that the kings are probably better on the h file than the g file and neither side is developing their minor piece or or pushing on the king side or queen side which white and black do in the king's indian and instead they're playing these slow preparatory moves that don't that don't do very much and it's not only confusing to the student it's confusing to the grandmasters like myself. Yeah. And <laughs> King H1, King H8. Just as we mentioned it, it is played. Oh, she did play King H8. Oh, okay. She did. She did. I didn't and know I she played it when I said it. <laughs> no, 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 she didn't. She just played it just now. So no. it was like uh, we got our, our crystal ball and uh, we predicted the future. King H8 played indeed and here you know it's still a move according to the database that i have in front of me you know white can play a4 another move is knight to e1 and knight to g1 that wow. is a third choice and uh, of course you can always play anything else like rook to b1 b4 but this time with the insertion of the king being on h1 and h8 oh interesting interesting developments here I did not predict on any level that Leighton J would play a King's Indian defense. I was anticipating a Queen's Gambit accepted something a little bit more classical, but dynamic at the same time. And I don't think Humpy was uh, expecting this one either. I think it's to do with the tournament situation. We're, tomorrow it will be crossing the halfway point and both these players are on minus one Humpy she has a very classical style but we did see when she's pushed to be mega aggressive she ent wasn't entirely in her comfort zone there yeah and i'm getting worried that the, the game is going to go knight g1 and then knight g8 and then i have to make sure i never show my students this game because i can't answer their questions but yeah knight, knight moving the knight to d2 or e1 or g1 makes sense because a lot of times uh white wants to bolster the center by by playing f3 after black plays f5 um, and typically knight e1 and knight d2 are the moves. So white's knight can go over to the queen side and advance with b4 and c5. 
So knight g1 is unusual, but it's an extra idea that white has by playing king h1. And now the g8 square is available for black. So black can play either knight to g8 and try to play f5. And occasionally black's going to try to play bishop h6 and trade off the bishops, um, which of course you can do after knight, either knight to g8. Yeah. That's, that was the Petrosian plan, right? Knight to g8 and bishop h6. Yeah, unfortunately, I do that a lot in my games where I'm so passive and I'm trying to trade off my bad pieces. But maybe that's that's my style is to get a bad position and hope that my opponent overreaches. Not, not a good style, is, but fun. It is, a, it is a fun style, actually, because, you know, to play with continuous energy requires a lot of calculation. It requires requires a lot of precision at the same time as well and as you mentioned this is the only bad piece because it's looking at its own pawns if you get rid of it and you still have dynamic potential as, again as you mentioned with f5 pawn storming this is psychologically very very difficult to handle when you have an unsafe king and you have to expend so much time you know working out all the checks the captures the threats and you know what are the aggressions how can you handle that so I'm looking forward to this, especially because I know Humpy, she doesn't like to be attacked. She doesn't like to play with an unsafe king. She prefers mm -hmm. the classical simple chess where she's the one pressing. For me, it's the perfect strategy. Pressing, no risk, you play for two results. That's when she is really in her, at her finest. Okay, well, surprises galore in this round. So let's go back to the bird's eye view and have a look at our remaining game, which is between Gar uh, Salimova and Goryashkina. Yeah, this looks like a typical uh, Catalan opening. Um, both players played very quickly to this theoretical position. Um, where white is supposed to be a tiny bit better, but black is very close to equality. White has a little more space. Black has the two bishops and black puts the bishop on C6 so that white's cattle and bishop on G2 isn't, isn't ruling the board as it sometimes does. Yep. This is, uh, this is one of the perks of playing the Catalan. You get this beautiful bishop. So they, they played straight into this main line, right? So kind of just, no, nothing, nothing surprising here. Yes, a6, queen takes, sorry, a4 just to prevent b5. And uh, this is where you see bishop d7, as Ben points out, you put your bishop on c6. So it challenges this little beast there on g2, mm -hmm. which sometimes just cuts the board <laughs> in two and is the most annoying piece. And now this bishop comes out to g5. The reason why it does this is to get control over the center. And bishop takes f6. I'm just, uh, again, checking in the openings. Bishop mm -hmm. takes f6. I just wondered whether that was unusual in any way. If whether, nope, not unusual. Knight takes f6, knight c3, bishop to d5 should be the main move here. Yeah, and White's going for a, a like a two result game like you like. I'm slightly better, and if Black defends correctly, it should be a draw. But otherwise, I can have a slight pull and play on the Queen side and get more space in the center. Um, so it's it's a it's a really good practical choice, I think, for White to get a position um, where Black doesn't have a lot of winning chances. Totally. And uh, this is the type of position that uh, Salimova is excellent in as well. So White ultimately going for a very slow build, trying to get the center. The dream, the dream is to just, you know, remember this knight can jump into e5. But the dream is at times to be able to go e5. And again, you need help for this. But again, to relocate this bishop to, I've done it myself, to put bishop c2 and set up a battery. And you kind of also want to do things like h4 and just expand with as much space as possible. But knight c3, and uh, interesting moment now for Goryashkina, and she's paused. Is she going to go bishop to d5, or is she intending to go a5 to secure the b4 square for her pieces? And how is she going to fight against this plan of going rook to e1, e4? 
yeah, I definitely think that's what White wants to do is get an E4 whenever possible, either by playing rookie one uh, and or playing queen D3, especially after bishop D5, um, so we can try to play E4. And if black plays bishop D5, black can also try to play C5 quickly and try to equalize the position more and just have to, has to calculate whether E4 is a good move, which to me, it looks like E4 it's is a good scary. move here. Yeah. It looks scary, right? And, and a yeah. lot of this, one of the super GMs, they have all this stuff prepared like forever. Um, you know, Hikaru, Wesley, so Fabi playing all these Catalans and just knowing the theory, like basically forever. And I think if you don't, then I think white can get an advantage if black doesn't play super accurately, which obviously I don't know how to do. I don't play black in a Catalan. I've seen a lot of Catalans and I noticed that top players in the world are always playing a lot more theory than I know. Um, and so it's, it's risky to have black in a Catalan and be less prepared than your opponent because white has this nice space advantage and black is sort of passive, but solid. And some people like right. doing that and some people don't. Yeah, totally. And never forget the power of this bishop on G2 because, you know, say in this type of game, um, I was just thinking if for some reason after, after C5, if something like this happened, and then knight takes knight takes d5 this bishop is still very much cutting the board still targeting b7 and also this queen on d8 doesn't have any comfortable squares because white's so ready with quick action in the center again can also go e4 and uh, start asking questions to this knight and never underestimate this piece especially if a pawn comes to e5 so really anything can happen here and white does have the very comfortable position so the the big issue is that if bishop to d5 isn't the best move how to fight for the space do you have we have we seen we've seen a move whoops that's sorry ignore that arrow <laughs> i we saw queen to d6 that's unusual but i guess since white traded off her dark squared bishop you don't have to worry about bishop f4 but it's still a unusual square in the Catalan for Black's queen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I wonder if she wants to yeah, play queen before and trade queens. I wonder that as well. That was also my first instinct when she saw queen to, D, queen to D6. I also wonder whether she's perhaps planning to do a like a very sophisticated bishop to D5 or maybe even one of these knight to E4 ideas. Again, just trying to prevent white from ever getting an e4 break and connecting the rooks because there have been some downsides of uh, pushing a4 that you do concede the b4 square so now is salimova's turn to think i'm not sure she would be should have been expecting queen to d6 so once again the mind games in action and uh, now that all the players have successfully navigated the opening stage i think it's the perfect time for us to take a short break but remember don't go anywhere because more of the action to come see you in a few minutes Hello, Manakam. Manakam. So this is where the magic happen, happens and this is where all the magic has already happened. Yes, that's a good way of putting it. That's my world junior. 87. I, I, 87. It's difficult to tell you how many doors that opened for me and uh, what, uh, what historical moment it was and when I got back. The chess Oscars. Very nice, these five of them. Five of them. The Wanderers. Five and there's one on top that is the sixth one. So since he had already got five, they didn't want to give him the same trophy. So they gave him a trophy of a king with the world in his hand. This is Anand's first ever mention in a newspaper. Oh. So this is his first ever Very he was mentioned. 
V. Anand achieved a national record by winning all the nine rounds to notch That's a right. maximum of nine points in the sub junior championship. But imagine now T. S. Ravi's daughter Rakshita is part of the West Bridge Anand <laughs> Chess Academy. I mean, it's so beautiful to see how you know life uh, comes about. So world rapid chess and mind champion. So this was uh, NIT gave me this nice. Uh, Why don't you just tell me your Aruna knows all the trophies and why you won better than you remember it, Anand? Because I cleaned and read. Because it's true. Because it's true. Boy, <laughs> <laughs> did you have a favorite? Thank you so much, Anand. I feel this is extra motivation for all the youngsters. This opportunity to actually come here and witness these achievements and spend time with you in this stunning room, Anand Aruna. Thank you so much for this. We are back and today's games look like they are getting ready to deliver on excitement. But first, Mike Klein was successful in finding Nemo and got some of her thoughts on what it's like having the event on her home city, Toronto. Let's have a listen. You GM Nemo, the most famous chess player in Canada. And we've got a lot of burning questions. First of all, who's going to win the women's candidates? Wait, 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 wait. I was going to say Lei Ting Jia. I said Lei Ting Jia before the tournament, but right now it's looking a little rough. So I'm going to go with Tang Zhongyi. Fair enough. Now, if Tang Zhongyi wins, will you come back to be our translator? Absolutely. 
And what about the men's, the candidates rather? Is Folly Racer Faruja going to play a 200 game bullet match? Absolutely, yes. I'm challenging to him the moment I see him today. Craziest prediction about the candidates, what is it? Right now, Fabi coming first because I think Jan is locked in. You played a blitz event last night. How did it go? I got six points. Only have a point behind Alexandra Kostanyuk. How many cameras are facing us right now? Way too many. This is honestly nerve wracking. <laughs> is this as most cameras you've ever had face you? Yeah, this is the most cameras I've ever seen in a room. Andrea Bocelli was here today. You ever rocked out to Andrea Bocelli during your stream? You know what? I have never, but I love Andrea Bocelli. Wow. What's the most fun part about this job? Being able to meet awesome people like you, Mike. That's very nice of you. How much pride do you have that's in Canada? Uh, quite a decent amount. I'm, I'm back in Toronto now, and I'd like to represent Canada. You going to play in this one day? Only if somebody motivates me to. I feel like it'd be so hard. They're so good. All the ladies are so good. How'd you spend the eclipse? Tried watching it. Wasn't very successful. Saw like this, this sliver. You and me both. Finally, what's the one chess experience you've never had that you'd like to have one day? Getting to play in a very important match, like the finals for the World Cup or playing on the candidates. I just want to play chess in zero gravity. There you go, WGM Nemo. Now back to you in the studio. And there you had Nemo's predictions. She has, uh, is thinking that Tan Chong Yi is going to be the winner. Well, she's in good shape though, Tam. Yeah, predicting the player who's in first place to win, that's a relatively safe prediction. But in a couple of rounds, everything can change, as you know. Although <clears throat> I think we both like uh, Tan Chong Yi's position. In fact, the engines all, all think that White has a slight advantage so I guess that proves that White has a slight advantage in chess, which is what we thought beforehand. True, true. But uh, we left it in early days, right? We left it on move three, E3 came, and mm -hmm. uh, Anna was surprised and she reacted with E6. So just uh, retracing our steps and after bishop to D3, C5. And the way that I find it very helpful to understand these positions from the white side is just to envisage yourself being black, but having that extra tempo, that extra time. So after knight c6, castles, just think of it, it's just like a queen's gambit declined. Mm -hmm. Nothing aggressive in it, but you do have this whole possibility after knight d2, rook c8, a3, a3 stopping this knight coming to b4. And now she jumps in with the knight to e5. And here it's really unusual, right? To go c takes d4 first, and now go knight takes e5. I've that is, that not is seen unusual. anything like that. Mm -hmm. I've seen knight takes e5 immediately in this position without trading those pawns, but like this, no. Yeah, I agree. It makes uh, it's a it's a different position now because black has the half open c file and black has access uh, to the c5 square for her knight or her bishop. Um, but black hasn't castled yet, so this could be risky because uh, white can start attacking on the king side uh, even before black castles. So, like if knight d7, we can play queen g4, and I'm already right. I'm already worried if I'm black that you know this this is going to be a nice attack for white. True, but these days we we have to stop judging things optically and back mm -hmm. it up with me. Because say like you played g6, what's going to be the continuation for white? Because black is going to be arguing, you know, I'm going to go knight c5, maybe I'm going to go h5. Everything's solid with my pawns on light squares. I'm a big fan of light square strategy. Mm. What next? It's funny, if black plays knight c5 and takes the bishop, that reminds me of the pawn structure yesterday uh, in one of the games that we saw with, uh, with Salamova. Um, right. If if white wants to stop knight knight c5, black could play white could play b4, but I'm not sure if white's interested in that. Maybe white just wants to play knight f3 to d4 and secure the d4 square for the knight. Okay, so but yeah, as, as soon as black castles, I'm worried that white's gonna play like f4, rook f3, rook h3, and play caveman chess. Yeah, so you're you're worried as soon as the king goes here. <laughs> 
<laughs> the rig will zoom up to age three. No, it's, it's scary stuff, right? Because I have this rule in chess that when a white pawn stands on e5, I think I picked it up from Max Erver in one of his books. It says with a pawn on e5, it's all about the kingside attack. With a white pawn on d5, it's all about space. You'd think it was about queenside attack, but it's not. It's just about mm -hmm. grabbing as much space as possible, sitting on it and stopping your opponent breaking out. So that's really made an impression on me. And since then, I've always thought e5, kingside attack. And I think you're right. Playing like the caveman is going to be very, very scary. But and with a knight on d4, which is really nice about the whole thing, is you prevent you prevent a rook, say for instance, this happens, you prevent a rook getting any access whatsoever to c2. So there's no compensation there. This bishop, bad. Yeah, you can get to a6, but woo, it's not great there. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we do have some moves and okay, knight to d7, queen to g4. And looks like once again, our prediction is on point. Uh, yeah, I would be very scary if I was black. And the main reason, well, one is I'm going to get attacked, but the other one is Ten Zhang Yi's has like all of her time left still. So this is like still in her preparation. And Muzi Chuk's already used half an hour on her clock to get this position. Um, so I, I don't like the fact that I actually like White's position quite a bit, and I I don't like the fact for black that black is taking a lot of time and white seems to just be playing super quickly. This seems very risky for Black. Yeah. And uh, let's see how risky it is, right? If I just go castles. <laughs> I, the reason I'm chuckling because I, I feel like I'm being very, very, very provocative. Boy, it's um, hard, not to, hard not to play F4 because I want to play F5. Right. OK, let's go for it immediately. No, so, the engine okay. hates me. The engine, the engine always hates hates it. No. Okay, so, so what other kind of ideas do we have? I was also I, I liked your knight to f3 idea. Knight f3 to d4, yeah. Yeah, knight to f3. Again, not great with it. I wonder where the engine wants to kind of go the queen coming out over to where to go. H I wondered whether it's a, it's a benefit to kind of get g6 and just to weaken the dark squares around the king. Yeah, it looks like we can force g6. Right. h6 looks too dangerous, like it's it's going to get in trouble. Yeah. Which way to go? Do you go queen h5? Do you go g? If I'm going to put my queen on the h file, probably h3, so g6 doesn't get a tempo. Yeah, that's that's that was also my my vibe as well. So H six just feels like you're playing with fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I really want to be doing your F four idea. I really want I to play F four, F five now. Yeah. Yeah, so. F four, knight C five, and maybe we're not getting anywhere after F. Maybe this is actually bad for us because after knight takes bishop, the rook does come to C two, but this is kind of idea is very 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 dangerous. Okay, so mm -hmm. maybe. Maybe back to you. your. I feel I feel like knight to f three is also an idea to be very. Yeah, the knight's mind. really good on d four. Yeah. But maybe why are we allowing this knight to get to c five? Why not just kill it? Oh, just play b four right away. Yeah, yeah. just go b four. Just go b four. Stop it before it even gets there, and then we've got that free hand to attack. No, I agree, and I think black has to play a5 otherwise i think black's going to get smushed mm -hmm. yeah and then i don't know what white should do if white should because if i play c3 i'm blocking my bishop but it could be that just to keep your black's pieces out of the game that it's it's still reasonable to do yeah then we might see a I'm d4 also, again oh it's also for me really tempting now i don't like I like to take pawns. I don't really like to gambit pawns, but I'm also mm -hmm. thinking about your plan of going knight f3 and just giving up this b pawn. And it's the a rook that, if allowed, Ooh. will swing over. Um, do we have any moves played? No. Queen to g4. Queen to g4, and Anna is thinking how to consider. But in conclusion, I just think that 
castles is just simply unless you're a computer and or you have nerves of steel i think this is just way too risky yeah i'd definitely be scared if i was if i was black yeah very scary and yeah to i'm very scared as well i also wonder and uh it's a bit unconventional to do whether c4 i mean this type of stuff is done often in the caracan and i know it is completely illogical because i'm literally opening up this bad piece but the idea is is that you know you're going to be very quick with taking action in the center mm -hmm. yeah getting rid of the d5 pawn means i have knight e4 later and then i could go to yeah f6 or d6 depending on the situation but it might make more sense for white to play if white's going to play b4 to do it instead of playing queen h3 so the queen defends the b pawn so then a5 yeah. doesn't have a threat really okay yeah 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 okay and then Just we could play it like rook a to e1 to e3 and do a rook lift that way rook g3 yep. rook h3 so we're talking about going b4 first mm -hmm. keeping this queen on g4 and then swinging over the rook yep I like it. I like it. And incidentally, I'm just going to check the computer. Computer says B4. Think about what your opponent wants to do and just stop it. B4 and completely agrees with you. After A5, uh, loves your rookie one idea. Also likes your knight of three idea that you suggested earlier. Yeah, this looks great. This bishop on D3, it's on the perfect diagonal. I think it's just way too risky to castle kingside. In the French defense, I often have a, a rule that this bishop on d3 is the perfect piece. And if you think back to the French defense, black does everything to stop this bishop getting to d3. Um, so what is... Wait, wait. So after g6, I just had a glimpse at the computer evaluation and it says mm -hmm. before stop yeah, this knight we, getting to c5 it's very hard, no hard to find counterplay for black it's hard to find counterplay oh oh problems yeah and a5 it's just like well continue as normal you just go knight to f3 you get that square with d4 is it is it so easy like if if black is going h5 is there any ability to kind of create chaos? Um, oh, you want to? Do you want to play G five if I play Queen F four? I don't know if you want to. I was just wondering. I I don't know whether I want to either. But <laughs> unless unless I'm I'm doing something. Yeah, I don't believe in Black's position. The Black King just looks like it's permanently going to have some issues. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, I think white doesn't even play for checkmate here. White just keeps the bind and has the space and stops black's pieces from getting to good squares. It just has a big advantage because of that. Like black, white can solidify the queen side by playing something like bishop d4 and c3 so that the bishop's not blocked and just keep, keep a bind on the position so black can't move. Yeah. And, and okay, so I know this, this is really risky, but... I, I honestly don't see anything for black other than just suffering. So yeah, probably queen d4 <laughs> to keep it or queen d2 is good too. Now, now white's going to try to play f4, I think as soon as he can, mm -hmm. like move the knight and play f4. Yeah, but maybe queen d2 is better. So my knight has the d4 squared. Oh uh, yeah, this is queen d2, queen d2. Everything is protected. Everything is calm. And just what are these pawns doing? Black has forgotten the rules of development, or rather, I have forgotten the rules of <laughs> development because as it stands, this is the game position. And uh, Anna probably has to. She did play G6. Just grin it. She did play G6. Yep. Yeah. It was a tough decision because they both look risky G6 and castles. But as we see, B4, preventing Black's counterplay, preventing this knight getting to C5, 
It's just going to be a significant advantage for white on account of the fact that black has got no breakthrough, it's got no active squares for the pieces. And this point on b4 can easily be maintained with a knight coming to f3. Yep. Anna already in big trouble. Oh, was not expecting that. Move 13 and uh, Tan deploying a very quiet opening that seems to have caught Anna off guard. Mm -hmm. Shall we go to the, uh, the bird's eye view and take a look at the other games? The game that I was the most excited about is probably the most, you know, equalish, not too exciting, but the other games are all heating up. Okay. Where do you want to go? Should Let's we go, to should we go... Charlie's game with Lano? Okay. By Charlie at Lano. Okay. Because that's all there crazy. <laughs> that is very crazy. So when we left it, I was curious, how did Lagno continue? And was she going to defend? She went bishop to b7. A4 happened and B4 was the response. She says, you know what? I'm not defending E5 whatsoever. Being very stubborn, <laughs> Charlie says, no, she's not going to be taking that pawn on E5 because as long as this bishop has a free diagonal, everything, there will be compensation. Mm -hmm. D4 now on the board, BC3, BC3, and now E takes D4 and C takes D4. Well, 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 this is an unusual position. I'm not quite sure what's happening here. Yeah, I mean, I would have trouble guessing this was Rory Lopez. White doesn't have any development of her queen side yet. And we have a very unusual pawn structure. Mm -hmm. But I think it's totally unusual. I think black, you know, not knowing white's opening so well, I think black did a good job to get like almost an equal position. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, how is how is Black going to continue? And how is Vaishali going to put pressure? Because, well, both sides have their weaknesses, C7 and A6. Mm -hmm. But it does feel that the D pawn is a little bit more vulnerable. And then yeah, at least, at least White can play knight E5 later. Uh, Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, Vaishali has to figure out how to get her queen side developed. Yeah. And but yeah, we've seen we've seen that. King H8 in a lot of games today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have. And I was just wondering about that like, King H8 because it kind of doesn't. How did that one? So King H8 is, has made an appearance, but now Black to play. What to do? Bishop F6 how to improve the position further, knight to b4. Yeah, I was thinking the bishop can go to, to f6 or it can go to d6 after knight c to b4. Um, yeah. Can't go to d6 now, but yeah, that unfortunately that gives white knight e5 without being able to capture it later. It takes some pressure off of d4, but I do like the knight mm -hmm. on b4. I, I really like the knight on b4 and uh, d5. They're supporting each other. You don't need to worry them, about them in the long run. But also, I feel like this bishop on b7 needs to get into the game. So this knight on e5, how to handle that one? I guess you just there's no threat unless queen right. h5 is something that to be to be concerned about. Well, I can't suggest f6 because I never play f6. And I, I don't want to play F6 here. It looks too risky. Looks like I might get checkmated somehow. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Can I tempt you? You can you can play F6, but I, I had nothing okay, to do with it. Okay, okay. I, I'll take full responsibility. Well, the, the, engine, the engine doesn't doesn't shoot, shoot up. The thermometer is staying where it is. No. Well, well, the thing is that this knight, knight was pesky, and yes. where's the white knight going to go? Thankfully, this knight on d5 is doing a sterling job of blocking this diagonal, so we mm -hmm. don't have to worry about knight to g6. Ideas. So the knight back, is it going to go to knight to d3? Is it going to knight to f3? Knight c4? 
I would I would just go go back to F three. That would be me. But then I'm not sure why I played knight e five. Then I don't know if F six is such a big concession with the knight on F three. Yeah, and this, then this is where I get your move, bishop to d six. Mm -hmm. I don't see why black should be unhappy. Even material, no. all the pieces are out. Black has control of the center. White's queen side isn't developed. This seems like the opening has turned out, you know, fine for uh, for Lano. Totally. And what I like about this knight on b4 is that it actually prevents this bishop from redirecting itself to c2, where a pawn it would hit the h7 square. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Do we have any moves? Just going to get the games. C takes d4. No, no moves played. And we really like knight cb4. Yeah, because that defends the knight on d5 so much and opens up the bishop on b7. The knight's good on b4. It can't be kicked away. So mm -hmm. very standard kind of move. Yep. I, I particularly like the fact that it liberates this piece. And okay, so knight cb4, we were looking at knight e5, but there are other alternatives. But the question is, you're going to have to help me, Ben, because I'm really struggling to think of a, a good move for white. No, I agree. It's hard to develop the queen side because everything you do gives something away. Like knight d2 allows knight d3. The bishop can't go to g5 or f4. Bishop e3 seems silly. Mm -hmm. In fact, oh, did actually, you see knight actually, d2 is a actually, massive mistake. I think yeah, knight, knight, c3 knight c3 wins, c3 the, wins queen. the queen. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, I fell for that one. Unfortunately, I was white and I think we were five moves in and knight c3 came and I was like, and I was streaming at the time. And wow. <laughs> I was like, wow, I don't often stream. And sometimes when that happens, you just think, oh dear, this is not my day. Um, yeah, but it's, okay, it's, so. it's good content. The crowd likes when you blunder because they, they feel better about themselves. Yeah, I do. Do they like content like that? Oh, they, they love when the streamers game. when the streamer blunders, especially if you blunder your queen, then you win. Then they love that. Ah, okay, okay. Because <laughs> I, I was thinking the very first time I streamed, I thought, oh my goodness me, because I got a bit stressed and I started playing bad chess. Mm. And then I thought, oh, people really entertain watching me play such terrible chess. Yeah, and if you hang your said, queen no, in the opening, fine. yeah, if you hang your queen in the opening, then you get a cease and desist letter from Botez. Because that's uh -huh. you, can't, you can't steal her thunder. Okay, I know the rules now. But after nice, nice see before the serious question though for Vaishali, how is she going to unravel? This bishop is completely dominated as well because mm -hmm. he's got no squares on this diagonal. So maybe it has to stay at home. This knight needs to find a good role. Perhaps it can go to a three to c four. Yeah, I actually like that. Although I'm, I'm I'm getting worried now that knight c3 is winning, but it's not. But I'm I'm scared now because of my it, silly suggestion earlier. Yeah, knight c3, knight c3. Thankfully, we do have one square, <laughs> <laughs> and it's good enough. Queen to d2, uh, mm -hmm. and then this knight I think needs to really go back to d5. So, but I think that's the, that's the best idea. Yeah, I like but, your knight uh, a3 move. I like that because I like knight c4. Yeah, because. Otherwise, I just don't see what's happening. But on the other hand, all black needs to do is uh, queen, c, queen, c, queen d7 connect, start connecting the pieces together, mm -hmm. shift the queen over to f5, move a rook over. I mean, thankfully, everything is protecting themselves as knight on d5 is doing a wonderful, wonderful job of keeping guard on the bishop on e7 and also b4. So don't see any problems whatsoever for Katarina in this particular position. But she's still thinking, what else could she be considering other than knight cb4? She could be considering bishop f6 um, or even mm -hmm. bishop b4. And since that's an aggressive yeah. move. That's totally. And, and how would Vaishali respond to this one? Maybe bishop to d2. I think so. It was a bad piece. It was mm -hmm. a bad piece anyway. Let's yeah. get rid of it. Yeah. I don't like bishop b4 as much as the knight going to b4, but as long as something goes to b4, it'll be okay. Mm -hmm. And if bishop to 
F6. Oh, do you see the evaluation bar creeping up? Maybe there's some bishop to a3 ideas. That would be the first move that I think of because. Oh, yeah, you can't play remember... rook 8 Wow. Yeah, because rook e8, let's uh -huh. just point that out. Rook e8, rook takes e8, and queen takes rook, and this knight on d5 is loose. So every move has its consequences. So bishop to f6, not quite right. But in the case of knight cb4, once you see it, it just feels like it's very natural. The bishop comes to life. Everything is overprotected, which is very important in this type of open position. That means there's no tactical weaknesses. And then you can just get on with improving your pieces. And knight to e5, which is probably the first move that you'd need to think about when you're facing Vaishali, you can see that you can just drive that knight away. Although we're playing Vaishali, actually. We should always check the sacrifices Knight, knight e5 f6 is there any way that she can generate an attack no the knights are doing a good job of as you pointed out stopping the white bishop from going to c2 um, and white's other pieces are are not really playing right now so i don't mm -hmm. think black should be worried about getting checkmated with most of white's pieces on the first rank okay yeah okay well Knight cb4, that uh, looks to us like the best move. I'm just going to check with the engine to see. Yes, we get the engine stamp of approval, Ben. I always yeah, feel yeah. a bit of <laughs> rush of blood to my head when I get that. Mm -hmm. Rick C, Knight cb4, Knight a3, also considered the best white response and upon which black should be challenging in the center with c5. And yes, they see Lagno plays the most active move. Excellent, excellent decision there from Lagno. Well, let's go back to the bird's eye view. And can we go to the game between? Take a look at that. It's in green. Humpy Canaru against mm -hmm. Lei Tingjie. <laughs> it just looks like it's beginning to get wild. So we left it with some very strange move. King to H one hang on let me just get everything up so we left it on move nine when king h1 had been played going to the humpy canary leiting j yeah we left it when king h1 was played leiting j said anything you can do i can do better <laughs> knight to e1 are we going to see knight to e8 no knight to d7 and oh. both sides getting ready for that break in the center f5 f4 it's mass tension. Whenever I prepare such a kind of position in my notes, I always call this rams locking horns. I always mm. like imagining two stags, two rams to any like complete massive. It's a brawl in the middle of the board. So F4, no. E takes F4, Bishop takes F4 and H6. Okay. How to handle this by the way when it comes to the evaluation bar <laughs> we were discussing this during the break you've got to bear in mind that the computer hates the king's indian defense in mm. general <laughs> as soon as you play it it's like oh no no white is so much better so you've got to disregard that one a little bit because black's dynamic play is something that the computer does not appreciate that's for sure practically the king's indian's a lot better than than what the engine would say. The results are are much better than engine just always says white's plus one. Um, this position, typically when I'm white in the King's Indian, if I ever play F4 against F5, it turns into some kind of equality and I never get an advantage. So I usually don't play F4 uh, when I'm white. But as you pointed out, Humpy doesn't like to get attacked. So this isn't where somebody's going to get checkmated. This is a big fight in the center. And uh, both sides, you know, pieces stand okay. Black is probably trying to play G5 and F4 and control the dark squares. Um, and if white doesn't like that, white can take on F5 now. Yeah. Um, or, or move the bishop off of F4 so that after G5, we could take on F5. Yeah. The way to move the bishop to D2, E3, uh, E2 maybe? 
Um, yeah, I like I like d2 better just to keep uh, my bishop safe and. Mm -hmm. So that. But it doesn't seem like White's getting comes, an advantage here. Yeah. No, White doesn't doesn't feel like White is even getting an advantage because I guess. Okay, well, the big thing is that you can't jump in with your knight to e5 because this bishop is eyeballing h6. Right. So after knight e5, knight takes e5, bishop takes e5 is the move you want to play. Mm -mm, not possible because this pawn falls off the board. So let's go back. And is g5? Is this the kind of thing that the King's Indian players do against me? They go g5, mm -hmm. they don't care. And I'm like, wow, you can play like that. What courage! Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> then I think about it some more and I think, yeah, quite right too as well. Also, it's quite a nice move, g5, because it stops a, a white knight getting to f4. That's and, right. Uh, if white could play knight f4 to e6, that would be nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we're pretty good at predicting the move, so maybe we will see that. Bishop d2 and g5. And if Humpy is getting nervous, she can, she can take out f5, whatever she wants. But that might give away white's chances of getting an advantage. Mm -hmm. And how would white get an advantage, do you think? Well, I, I like um, your 96 idea, but but g5 stops it. The g5 kind of puts a dampener on things. And yeah, then there's the question like e takes f5, who benefits from this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, both, both sides benefit, yeah. Yeah, this knight now can come to d4. Mm -hmm. I, I, hang on, I'm just trying to, I, I just highlighted the queen for nothing. This knight can come into e5. And black's pieces are very active. There's no purpose to the white's army either. I don't see yep. what these are doing. I was considering playing knight e4 in bishop, and I realized knight e3 is annoying. So I have to be careful the knight doesn't hop into e3. Yep. I also considered that as well, but then I saw the knight to e3. So interesting. Somehow you would like this queen to jump over to h5 mm -hmm. and then go knight to e4, but how to clear this path? Maybe we can go back a little bit because this is why Humpy is taking her time because yes. she, she has to be careful here. And if we go, if if we play like a wimp immediately, just checking this out, mm -hmm. don't, don't judge me. Knight takes mm -hmm. f5. And then I was thinking queen, queen dd2 is just going to be met by g5. So right. there was no gain whatsoever in, in this whole exchanges. g5 is still coming. Black's plan is pretty consistent. So let's not go for that particular one and how dangerous is your g5 f4 suggestion Looks yeah maybe white to me. maybe white just has to allow that and if black ever plays f4 white can play g3 and break up those pawns um, so maybe after bishop d2 g5 white just makes a strengthening move i just don't know what the strengthening move is it seems like white's rook on a1 is misplaced the queen on d1 is misplaced but I'm not sure how to put them on better squares. Queen c2 seems pretty timid, but white's pieces are really jumbled in the center. It's hard to, to move forward. Yeah, they're just tangled up, right? They're, there's no plan. So how to... I did, I did wonder whether it's too much to go g4. Hey, sometimes when you play king h1, you play g4. Yeah. Right, right. And, and the reason was that I didn't particularly enjoy this bishop on e2, and I was mm -hmm. dying to get my queen over to the king side. So, how ridiculous is it to kind of make the move g4? So, okay, as, so as, here it's black to play. So, I guess g5 really puts a dampener on that one, though. Oh, yeah. Then I didn't realize it's black to play there. That's too bad. Yeah, that's a bit a bit, bit annoying. So, uh, okay, well, e takes f4. So I'm going to consult the engine in this current position because uh -oh. I'm kind of curious as to e takes f4, bishop f4, h6. What does it say? And it says c5. Wow. Wow. 
that seems desperate. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but it, it's not contrary to most assessments that it gives against the king's inner defense. It's not actually saying that white has a massive advantage here. It actually just says it's equal. Mm -hmm. C five, and the whole thing is it's saying that after knight takes C five, after these trades, then you can go knight to B five. Mm -hmm. But things get very, very scary after knight takes c7 and rook takes f4. Mm -hmm. What do we think? Yeah, this is a big mess. And then d6. What do wow. we think about this? It's a forcing line, though. I mean, if you were to go c5, knight takes c5, you're in for a penny, in for your pound. I, I can't I, play queen b8 and pin the pawn because the pawn's queening. Yeah. So that's too bad. Otherwise, yeah, now, now you can queen if I take the rook. That's true. Two yeah, queens queen, are better than two, two bishops. Are... Yeah. <laughs> yes. And they're also better than one queen. So, uh -huh. okay. So c5. Wow. h6. c5. And if black says, I don't want any part of that, well, c takes d6. Mm -hmm. So you have to deal with this d attack on the d6 pawn so either you're taking on e4 and going for an exchanges that way or knight takes c5 Ooh. it's funny the bishop on f4 becomes strong when the d6 pawn is gone because of the knight b5 that's exciting yes that, that that's very very exciting it's, it's a lot more exciting than what we <laughs> were coming up with which actually it's it, it it does like it does like bishop to d2 it says there's nothing wrong with that and mm -hmm. you, we it came to the same conclusion that we would come to that after e takes f5 knight takes f5 there wasn't that much in it rook c1 yeah and that's... black is untangling and we have this very impressive cluster of pieces that actually are not doing a single thing I mean, she is thinking a long time, so I'm sure C5 is on her radar. It just wasn't on mine because I didn't understand the C7 pawn was weak after you take it. Yeah. But yeah, C5 is very interesting. It certainly is interesting, and it might be now or never. And we do see Humpy Kanaru just thinking she's considering whether she can go for more, perhaps with active moves such as C5, which is what the engine suggests, or will she play it more quietly, retreat the bishop? Well, we're going to have to find out after the break because uh, we are going to go on a short pause. But remember, something exciting is coming to chess. As seen on Shark Tank, the Chess Up team returns with the brand new Chess Up 2, an electronic chessboard that combines the best of online and over-the-board chess with built-in Wi-Fi and chess.com compatibility. Chess Up 2 carries all the convenience of online gaming, like access to the millions of players in the online chess community without losing the unique experience and feel of over-the-board chess. And when you finish the match on the board, you can save games directly directly on chess.com and analyze online. To learn more about Chess Up 2 and save $100 when you pre-order on Kickstarter, head to go.chess.com slash chess up to or use exclam chess up in chat.
We are back with all the action in round six and this one looks like it's going to be a thriller. We have so many exciting encounters already with the evaluation part actually quite significantly in White's favor in a few games. And in one of those games, it is Tan Zhong Yi against Anna Muzichuk. It looks like Tan Zhong Yi is doing very, very well against the Ukrainian number one grandmaster. And uh, there you can see Tan Zhong Yi, she is a formidable player. Not only is she one of the top seeds here, but she's also in the lead with a plus two, three and a half points out of five. In 2017, she became a women's world champion. She did lose her title to the now four-time women's world champion, Ju Wan Jun. And in 2023, she faced off in the candidates final to Lei Ting Jie. She lost that encounter. She's also Chinese women's champion as well as women's world rapid champion just 32 years old and a classical rating of 25 21 she qualified actually for this event on demand she qualified by becoming second in the women's grand swiss last year she's such a formidable player but she is facing another very strong player anna muzichuk ukrainian number one grand female grandmaster and she, I think Anna, when she's asked what's her best achievement, she always says it's actually 2016 when she became World Blitz Champion and Women's uh, World Rapid Champion. Yeah, that's right. The players here are all formidable, but Muzichuk is a name that you've seen for years fighting for the top spots in these events. And she's having a tough tournament so far. Muzichuk had some excellent and or winning positions that turned out to end in draws. And now she's on the other side of it. She has a, a bad position and she needs to turn it around. And it's unfortunate if you lose your lost positions and only draw your winning positions, it's not gonna be a good tournament. So she needs to turn it around this game because so far the game is going in Tan Zhang Yi's uh, direction. Yeah, and I can uh, see from the game position that some of our predictions were completely on point, Ben. We should give ourselves a little pat on the back mm -hmm. because uh, after queen to g4, g6 was played and b4, of course, that knight was prevented from getting to c5. And uh, then after that, I think uh, she went a5, knight to f3. Wow. Tan is playing so well there. Knight to f3 was a very critical move. It also allowed this queen just to go and defend this pawn on b4 and allowed it to go mm -hmm. f4 and then drop back to d2 if she was going to be harassed. That was one of the key points to, to the knight moving to f3. And uh, after castles, rook e1, ab, ab, and now the rook moves over to a8 perhaps hoping to come in with a rook to a2, but it's frankly not very scary. So now it's Tan Zhong Yi's turn. And the big question is what to do. Yeah, I'm guessing that Black wants to play rook a2, although possibly Black wants to play rook a4. And that puts the question to White. Maybe that's more aggressive to mm -hmm. try to, White doesn't want to play c3. Um, if white does play c3, she can relocate her bishop to the c1 h6 diagonal, which might also be good. Okay. Um, but yeah, rook a8 to a4 is counterplay. And I was having trouble finding counterplay for black, but that seems like a reasonable way to play for black to try to stop white from just you know, playing a checkmating attack right away. Okay. Talking about checkmating attack. Let's go for it. H4. You know, when in doubt, just soften up the king side. So the big threat is to go h5. So mm -hmm. how how is this working? So rook to a4, onward soldier. Oh, just ignoring it. So rook takes b4. Yeah, that that, that was uh and then knight to bishop to d5, d4, knight to Yeah, let's just go bishop d4. Mm. Although I see the evaluation bar says, yes, not the best. This looks tough for black. Black won a pawn, but now black has some tough decision mm -hmm. to make about g6. 
Yeah. And White can play C3 next move and solidify the bishop and get the rook out of there also. Yeah. And I was also planning to go HG6 and sacrifice everything yes. I can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just to terrify the living daylights out of you. I mean, I could play King G7 or Queen E8 to defend G6. I just really don't like either move. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, still, this is the wall foundation. That's what mm -hmm. I call it. Mm -hmm. yeah. how, how to break it down. Still work to be done. Yeah, I'd probably start with C3 so I can move my yeah. knight on F3 somewhere if I need to. Rick goes, yeah. Rick goes to A4 just because. Yeah, after rook e3, I'm not sure where, how they get the rook over there to h3 um, or g3 and put pressure on the position because knight on f3 is blocking me. Yeah, maybe maybe h5 was a little bit wrong. Now I think about it a little bit more. Okay, first up, I forgot about that you were hitting b4. Mm -hmm. So if I go c3, because I I don't like going c3, but then I'm I'm just kind of going bishop to c1 at the right mm -hmm. time. No, the, right. the computer says, no, don't do that kind of stuff. To I, I think black can play knight c5 there. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 okay. I'm not sure if it's good, but at least I can do something. Yeah. So, okay, what about, okay, because what I really want to be doing is I actually want to be going knight to g5. Mm -hmm. And then having the fun with knight takes h7 or knight takes, and then going h5. Yeah, it seems That's, very dangerous to black. Yeah. Yeah. So how to how to get that in a good way? So if I go bishop yeah. to d first, mm -hmm. you go rook takes b4, and I go c3. You go somewhere just for fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, black is getting in knight c5 pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. and, and, how, and, guess... and then and after knight here. This is, and then knight to e, knight's hitting d three and come to e four. Yeah, not quite enough. So rook to a four, really nice defensive idea. Yeah, black needs to get counterplay, and I think rook a to a four was a a very good way of doing it. The engine still likes white a lot, but I'm not sure if white should sacrifice the b pawn or spend time defending it. Because not only is rook takes b4 a threat, I mean, black can play knight c5 now that the b pawn is pinned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then if you're not going, then I guess you challenge then. In that case, you play for the easy life. You go rook a1, no rook a4 for you today. And mm -hmm. then and then you go h4. And it's this rook on f1 that needs to eventually do some heavy lifting. Because when we think about it, this piece is still pretty poor. So is this one. It's not a, there's no checkmating attack, so to speak. But then again, one can't have everything in life. Yeah, I like rook a1 a lot because I guess black had another idea, which I didn't see, was to play bishop a6. And then if white plays b5, we can retreat and play knight c5 later. So mm -hmm. rook a1 sort of stops all of black's ideas, whether it was bishop a6 or rook a4 or rook a2. It's hard to play rook a1 because just recently we played rook e1. So it's it's hard to find such a move, but it, it meets black's counterplay on the, on the queen side. And it, again, it seems like black has a tough time trying to muster up something after your excellent rook a1, which I like a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it, it, I liked, I only found it because Okay, four was annoying. I don't know. No. Maybe the computer liked it a lot, but uh, I don't know. Rick A4 really bothered me with your knight C5 ideas. So, so I'm thinking queen to C7, connect those rooks. Yeah, now, now we can play H4, I guess, without any. Now H4, keep great it going. Fear. Yeah. And how is an attack if all the rooks have just, if all the rooks come off the board? Do we take? Do we not take? Yeah, I still like white's position a lot after trading the rooks because black's bishop on a8 is so bad. Yeah. But then may maybe h5 because looks like there's pressure on e5, so knight g5 might be tough to play. 
yeah knight to g5 yes 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 this uh also you have uh ideas that i've seen a lot of grandmasters do these days is they just go h6 h6 yeah h6 and they say get your king out of that one and that's the whole basis of it they you know this pawn on h6 is untouchable no this also, looks this looks F4. terrible strategically for black black's not getting checkmated but black has very little active play totally totally this bishop on a8 is so so bad okay so we going to the game position going back to the game position rook a8 rook a1 very nice gentle move played in a positional style but tan she thrives in the complications so i wouldn't surprise me if she's planning h4 mm -hmm. she dismisses this idea of rook a4 so how, how dangerous is you mentioned bishop to a6 how dangerous is this one well, I'd love to trade those bishops and B5 gains a tempo, but if black gets knight C5 in, then black is probably, you know, still in the fight. Maybe it's too slow. Maybe H5 is too quick. Yeah, H5 now. And and if you go knight C5, it just feels like you can take it, right? Yeah, I'm going to have to allow the sacrifice. So HG. And then hopefully, hopefully you don't mate me. Yep, keep taking King H8. And you'll you'll perpetual me. Draw agreed. Nice game. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful game. <laughs> Excellent. Then now and now I just need the rook, one rook to magic its way onto the well, H line. Rook, and rookie three, knight G5 just... is annoying. Probably rookie three. Yeah, rookie three. Yeah, and then your next yeah. move is knight G5. So that's getting risky. The queen goes to E8. Yeah, then I can the check golden on H6. Water test, but queen H6. Mm -hmm. King to g8, and then now the knight, knight, knight anywhere, knight d4, anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, rook, rook g3 is comes. annoying. Definitely annoying. Rook to g3. And it's going to be game over for the black king all by itself. So bishop to a6 is not possible at all mm -hmm. because of b5, and you don't have time to go knight c5. You've got to guard against the, the attack against g6. Right. So h4 rook to a4 and that was the tricky move because i couldn't see anything oh unless you go queen no oh she did play h4 interesting she did yeah, yeah. it's her style she thrives mm -hmm. in this type of complications mm -hmm. and there you go she left the board she's feeling happy with herself and now anna's position really hangs on a knife edge because rick a4 probably the only move to save or to create some counterplay at least queen f4 so what i was thinking i was thinking queen f4 mm -hmm. and then rook takes b4 and then i was planning bishop to d4 but i can see that the king can just step up to g7 Yeah, you can't quite get in there so quickly. Not without sacrificing something. Mm -hmm. And I felt like... so. I feel like a critical it... line is c3, knight c5, bishop c2, rook a2. I feel like this is critical, but I think black is okay. Yeah. Because 94 is going to come next. Yeah, the engine says black is okay here. Okay. But yeah, I don't know what to do against knight c5, so maybe c3 is just a mistake. So, I feel there's something in the air. I just don't know what. Knight to g5. Knight to g5 we looked at, right? We looked at h5. That was... Did we look at knight c5? We looked at h5 and c3. Okay, so should, should we just, I'm not sure about knight to g5. I feel maybe there's some bishop takes g5 at the end. Mm -hmm. So, 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 so. Wait, we looked at h5. h5, rook takes b4. And now 
is there any sacrifices that we're missing? A bishop d4 seems so logical because our queen's attacked. So, yeah, like what could be more natural than that? Bishop to d4. And I then guess we, we could play queen g3 and give our bishop on b2 away, then start sacking on g6. Yeah, that's there is that. There is something like that. Queen h3. No, queen. I was thinking queen g3 because it keeps just a sack yeah, yeah, on g3. Yeah, the engine doesn't and you like can it. See that it's like no. Yeah, I wanted to sack everything, it, but. But I have a feeling that maybe there's some like knight d4 ideas. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, knight d4 I... is a better way to sacrifice the bishop, I guess. <laughs> Don't you think that chess would be so much more exciting if the players had access to the evaluation bar? We could call it evaluation chess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's more exciting this way because we don't know what's going on. Yeah. No, I know, I know, I know. But I have wondered whether one should introduce that concept where you just have the evaluation and the mm. and the player makes a move and the evaluation part goes up and you're like, oh, it, it oh, goes down. You're that? like, no, what did I do? <laughs> that would be funny for like, the spectators. It would. It would be funny. Okay, so knight to d4, and eventually the evaluation bar didn't go down. So we're on the right track. So Rick takes b2. Mm -hmm. What is the computer G6. seeing? He's got to take on g6. Right. And now let's. Yeah, take... e6 and g6 are both tender. So. Yes. Taking so, somewhere wins. So t we take on. Let's take on g6. Yeah, this doesn't Earlier. look good for black. No, it doesn't look. I mean, I wonder whether no, there's no F. No, because you you're quick there with rookie coming to e3. Pawn takes knight. This is simply going to be met by king h8. And now the rook can just. Either we're going to go. Well, knight takes e6 knight wins. Takes you're threatening mate and the queen. Yeah. In fact, yeah. I don't see how to stop queen g7, mate. Rook g8 hangs queen h6, come. mate. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so wait one second. Wait one second. So this means knight to d4. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful resource. Okay, so after... So let's run through this again, just for clarity's sake. h4, rook a4, onwards. Mm -hmm. Rook takes b4, and we just block that with the knight. This is irrelevant. Yeah, this is crashing Obviously. through here. Yeah. And knight d4 is a great move. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's thanks to our our evaluation bar that we we get there. So now king to what about happens if king to g7 cover g6? But do you cover g6? Yeah, I really want to take on g6 anyway. Yeah, I could take on g6 and take again. Yeah. Because if you play rook d4, I have bishop e4 check. And I give mate. Yeah. And it, and it, it was it was this line, f, f g6, you go knight takes e6, right? Yeah. No, actually, I, I missed bishop g5. So maybe you do take on d4. Yeah, this, this should be winning, I think. But yeah, okay. after bishop g6, rook takes d4. Uh, I thought bishop e4 check was mate, but I forgot about bishop g5. Mm -hmm. The game is too exciting. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on a second. Look at the live board. h4 played, rook a4 on the board, mm -hmm. and it's crunch time. And she played h5. She has played h5. Oh, Tan Zhong Yi. What an attacker. So, Rook takes b4. Knight d4. That's the critical position. Will she play knight d4? It is absolutely critical. Do you think she will? Do you th oh, I think she will. Yeah, I think she thought a long time about h4 in this position. Because not only is the knight getting to attack e6, when we do the rook lift with rook e3, our knight's not on f3 anymore. So it's helping our rook, it's helping our knight get to e6. 
and probably doesn't care about the bishop on b2 because she's has such a big attack on the king side okay well we're gonna see it we are gonna see it rook takes b4 i think she'll knight. play knight d4 what do you think yovi i don't know it takes <laughs> guts to sacrifice a bishop but it, but once you see it it makes total sense the bishop on b2 completely irrelevant way more important to crash through on g6 oh, yeah i think oh. she'll play knight d4 knight d4 okay we gotta dive into the analysis some more because it's absolutely fascinating knight to d4 and we already established that rook takes b2 game over right pawn takes g6 yeah i think if black plays something like king g7 white can just play a safe move like bishop c3 um, or bishop c1 and then and then start taking everything yeah yeah because actually actually where's this rook gonna go because if it goes a4 you go knight takes e6 yeah, we, we could just very play least. yeah yeah <laughs> And uh, we don't have to do anything other than put it in the bank. What is, what has happened? Actually, I can I can just take on g six and then take on e six. She's paid knight. She's paid knight d four. Yeah. No, but just you could take on g six and take on e six, and that wins right away. In this position, just if king g seven, then h g h g knight e six, just the game is over. But the bishop is uh, the bishop is uh, protecting it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're right. No, you're no, right, we're, you're gonna, right. we're gonna, we're gonna make you. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. gonna make me. Yes, you're gonna make check. And uh, yeah. here it is, the escalator mate queen to h7 check. Mate, wow, knight d4. Yeah, after and knight d4, this, so game, this game might end quickly. This game might end fast because I don't see what black does here. Yeah. Oh. It's Hanjong East playing really quickly this game. It was like child's play to her to find knight to d4. I have to change my prediction no here. Who's going to win the tournament? Teng Zhongyi. Okay. <laughs> She's on plus two already, and it looks like she is well on her way to, to plus three with a devastating attack against Anna Muzichuk. Anna having a tough time in this event. Three winning positions coming so close and yet so far away let me just check with the engine to find out what's black's best defense the best defense is get this knight c5 okay that one's uh -huh. uh, that one's logical but you are allowing hg6 boy i'm scared of that bishop takes g6 and now you have to go bishop to g5 yeah, but if I was black in a tournament game, I wouldn't. I, no, I mean, I, I would. I would assume this is really bad. <laughs> it is bad. There, there's nothing. It is nothing but bad, and this is bad, bad news mm -hmm. for Anna. Knight to d4. Knight c5. Hg6. No, it's, it was saying actually that after fg f to g6 is the best chance. Mm -hmm. Bishop to g6, and now bishop to g5. And here, black might have some chances in holding on. Mm -hmm. But again, this is terrifying. And yes. here you have to play queen h5. Pawn takes bishop is going to be met by queen takes pawn, king h8. And then this is the beautiful point that you then go f4 and you mm -hmm. back that up with a rook lift. Rook f3 or rook to e3 and the rook will swing across to deliver a devastating check against the king. Okay. That seems difficult to prevent the rook lift. Mm. It does, doesn't it? I mean, the only thing that I could see was bishop h4, at least try to set up a blockade, but rook e3. Mm -hmm. Rook takes bishop, just rook h3, and now the queen will go over to h6 and you'll pick up the bishop. Yeah, that bishop on b7 is just always so bad. It's like black isn't even a piece up. Because the mm. bishop just doesn't do anything. Mm. But this is still complicated. If she can play knight c5, then white has to play accurately to win. Yeah. Oh, 
knight d4. I, I just love the way that Tan just played it at tempo. She didn't pause. Yeah, you're right. You know, she had worked it all out. Knight d4. Another move that suggests is g5. How likely do you think is this one? Yeah, I mean, moves like that, I don't see why I need to sacrifice. I could just play bishop c3, and then I can continue with like f4 or something. <clears throat> I don't, I don't yeah. see why I, I need to sacrifice anything when I can just not sacrifice. No, and then, no, I, then I have to figure it. out whether I play fg or f5 next move, because I don't know. They're both too good. Totally. Uh, F you have to go h3. Yeah. And then they're saying knight takes his sex is devastating. Well, black's position is on the verge of falling apart. G5 looks mm -hmm. very unappealing. Time situation is not good either, Jovi. It's uh, no. an hour to 35 minutes. Tans the players are still, really quickly. Yes, the players are only still on uh, move 20. Tan just mm -hmm. uh, over an hour on the board. But knight to d4, what a fantastic move by Tan and Anna Muzichuk, well, she will now have to hope for a little bit of luck if she wants to survive this position. Oh, let's go back to the bird's eye view and mm -hmm. take a look at what else is happening. And it's all interesting. All the games are, are heating up right now. Yes, I can see that. And I don't know quite where to go to where, where which position takes your fancy? Uh, I'll suggest Vaishali Lano, because things have happened there. Things have certainly happened. The D pawn is missing from the board, and so is the C pawn. So that suggests to me that uh, Lagno managed to get in the pawn break C5. Mm -hmm. So just to confirm, yes, knights, yes, C5. And uh, Vaishali played bishop to B2 after a very long think. C5 occurred. Queen takes d4, setting up a battery against g7, threatening queen takes g7 checkmate. So again, if you do a nothing move, queen takes g7. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> again, another mating pattern that one needs to know, particularly at scholastic level, I would say. But uh, certainly, you need to be aware of those long range pieces. So after queen takes d4, bishop to f6, and now queen to d2. And what do we think of that about this one? Can this one just fizzle out with some trades? And then we're going to see maybe just an end game where it's three pawns on each side, no right. chance. Well, I, I definitely prefer black here because the bishop on b7 is so strong. Um, and the bishop on b2 is going to get traded. Also, white hasn't developed her queen side yet. But I actually had a question. Can you go back to when black played knight cb4? Because I don't, I didn't see what white did in that position. After uh -huh. knight cb3, so, oh, white played bishop b3 to c4. That's why I didn't yes. notice it because that move confused. I guess white wants to play queen b3. Yeah, to put pressure against that d knight to d5 and maybe knight mm -hmm. c3. Mm -hmm. And instead, ah, okay, c5, bishop b2. Yeah, I mean, the white just got nothing out of the opening. It looks like Lano played played really, really well. Um, yeah. to equalize. And now I like her position. I like her position too, but uh, I'm a little bit concerned that it might look promising for a few moves, mm -hmm. but then that's it. And then the trades will happen and the game will just fizzle out into a draw. So the time is now for Katarina and how to maximize this. Is it to go Bishop takes Bishop, and then I kind of what I want to do is if I were black, I would like to go bishop takes bishop, just uh, mm -hmm. get some trades, and then just centralize the queen to d7 because you kind of hit the nail on the head for me. I want to put my the queen on g4, get that pressure against g2. Yeah, and I want to get my knight to f4, but my b4 knight is hanging. That's too bad because mm -hmm. knight f4 looks like a nice aggressive move um, after trading the bishops. Uh, yes, so it might still be possible. You, there's all sorts of uh, tricks. So for instance, if you go knight to f4, wait one second, mm -hmm. wait one second, let's mm -hmm. uh, not 
give mm-hmm. up on the idea because after queen takes before we've got bishop takes f3 yep. ben we're rocking and rolling here mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah this looks good for black yeah this looks really good for black <laughs> 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 and then wherever the king goes, queen to g2, it's going to be checkmate. So, yeah, let's not let's not be put off by this line. Knight f4. How is white going to defend? Knight d2, I guess. Yeah, I was thinking knight bd2. But on the other hand, I could trade on f3 and then play knight d3 and fork your queen and rook. Oh, hang on. yeah, you can, can't you? Yes. Yeah, and just then, getting rid of my bishop so you can't take it. Yeah, this looks good for black. Yeah, this is excellent for black. Okay. So, okay, now I have four, how to handle this. Queen c3. No, but queen c3 is going to be met by rook coming to c8. No, no, no. I spoke too soon. This is very, very dangerous. Yeah, this isn't easy. Three, queen b three maybe. Yeah, that defends the d three square bad. also. No, um, yeah, but then still problems, right? Probably just. Well, actually, no. You could take back. I wonder if I can play bishop takes f three and knight c two. Yeah, I was thinking knight c two immediately. Also good. Yeah. And then queen takes, bishop comes to f three, and. You got your queen to g5 ideas. Mm-hmm. Pawn on g2 is hanging. Wow, I did not appreciate how dangerous it is for Vaishali. Yeah, the engine takes... thinks that white's okay, but I don't see how white's okay. There must be some brilliant how defensive is... move. How is white okay? Uh, do you have to go on the counterattack with. Is it rook a3, maybe? Maybe rook a3. Rook a3. No. I would... I was looking at rook a3, but I thought I could still just take on f3 and play knight d3. Knight d3, okay. Still, there's going to be a knight appearing on d3. Okay, so that's out of the question. Hmm. Are you going to have to help me out? I don't, I don't see how to save this. Bishop f1? It's bishop takes f3. Maybe... No. Bishop F1. I feel I feel like I'm guessing here. Yeah, maybe um, Bishop F1 or Queen takes B4, then Bishop F1. But yeah, the, the engine yes. doesn't like it. No, I, I can still yeah, I can still play knight g3 yeah. at some point. But I guess you can just go. You can, can I play knight g2 here? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, knight, of course, knight g2. Nice I don't know if I can, but battle. it's legal. No, it's good. It's good. There's no way to mm-hmm. Prevent queen takes g2 checkmate. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm stuck. I'm gonna have to consult the oracle here. She did out. trade on b2, so now we can see if she'll play knight f4. Lano did trade on b2. Yeah. She will, she will play. Queen takes b2. Knight to f4. Oh, okay. There's Right, get this, Ben. Only one move to survive. Everything wow. else, as we are discovering, gives Black a serious advantage. Rook to e3. Only wow. move. Wow, that allows Queen d1 checks. It looks crazy. <laughs> it looks crazy, doesn't it? Wow. And Queen to d1, apparently, <laughs> is just going to be met by Knight to e1. Yeah, because Not, if you play bishop f1, oh. then bishop takes f3 is winning. Yeah, if, if you go knight rook h1. e1, this is knight h3 is mm-hmm. very good for black. And or queen to c2 is also going to mm. be winning. Because after wow, here... Rook, rook e3 looks, looks bad, but the engine says it's okay. Wow. I know. And it wasn't even on my radar as well. No. Would suggest to me it's a very, Yay, very knight f4. Knight f4. Fantastic. Is she going to play rook e3, LV? What do you think? Is she going to find it? Oh, no, I think she's going to go queen d4. I think, I, think yeah, I, I, I wouldn't find rook e3. I'd be so scared of queen d1, I would never play it. Yeah, no. Uh, Vaishali's excellent at calculating, but I suspect that she's 
going to try to trade off queens, trying to mm -hmm. minimize Black's attack by trading off the queens, but she's going to be in for a whole lot of suffering in the end game if she tries to do that. But she's in potentially a lot of trouble. Yes. Black has threats of knight to d3. Black has threats of bishop takes f3. And Vaishali now will have to play very precisely in order to save this game. Yeah, rook e3 is pretty much an engine move. It looks like a bad version of rook a3, but it's a better version because knight d3 doesn't fork. It stops the knight d3 fork. Wow. wow, the tension is just brewing in this game. What a round it already looks like. We might be seeing two decisive results. And I think that this is the perfect time, time for us to take a little breather, take a short pause, because we are going to be back in a few minutes with all of the actions you don't want to be missing of this one. See you in a few minutes. Looking for new ways to enjoy chess? Check out our schedule of chess.com community events today. Mondays, play rapid opening roulette and expand your opening repertoire with a new opening each month. Tuesdays, compete against other untitled players in Untitled Tuesday. Battle your way to the top in Arena Kings on Wednesdays. Join the crazy fun of the Variance Community Series each Thursday and finish the week off each Saturday with the blistering Community Bullet Brawl. All happening in the Community Club on chess.com. This is chess. Chess is an experience. The excitement. The joy. The devastation. The undeniable drive to play again and again. Chess is an experience that's meant to be shared. What if you could experience chess in a completely new way? On a real chessboard with the power of AI at your fingertips. This is Chess Up 2. Take everything you love about playing on chess.com and experience it on a real chess board. Play a blitz match against a random online opponent. Conquer the bot you've been stuck on for months. Or challenge a friend halfway across the world. Chess Up 2 is always ready and always connected with built in Wi Fi. Never miss a move with full piece recognition. And review all your games right on chess.com. Chess Up 2 is more than a chess board, it's a chess trainer. If you're new to chess, Chess Up will teach you. If you already know how to play, Chess Up will teach you how to really play. With patented AI assistance, you can balance a match between players of any skill level or hone your skills against one of the built-in AI coaches. The makers of Chess Up 2 are the same team behind the original Chess Up. The best selling smart chess board in the world. So whether you're a beginner who wants to learn and improve while you play, or a chess pro who wants to go deeper into the world of chess, experience Chess Up 2 and level up your game.
We are back and boy have we been treated in this round. The players are inching towards the halfway mark and it seems like today some of the players they woke up and found themselves in an aggressive mood because we've had so much excitement. We've had potential tactics, potential kingside attacks. But let's check in on the two games that we've somewhat neglected, Ben. Mm -hmm. And that is between Nergul Salimova. She is the lowest rated, just 20 years old. And she is playing against the top seed, Alexandra Goryashkina. Goryashkina, she did come in as the favorites because although her rating is at 25.53, it's actually on a bit on the low point at the minute. She's been over 2,600 and there you can see some of her achievements. Last summer, she did Ben, of course, win the World Cup. And Alexandra Gurashkina, do you remember when she exploded onto the scene and everyone was like, wow, what a player. Yeah, I've been a big fan of hers for a long time and she was my pre-tournament favorite. Uh, to win this event um and i've i've talked about her a lot on my stream over the last couple of years because she seems like she has lots of excellent results and that she's a young player herself and is just seems to be getting better every year totally and i, I can remember that uh, a few years ago that whilst the women were all competing in the women's tournaments as well as the mixed ones for goryashkina she was she didn't want to play like the Russian Women's Championship. She would always play the Russian Open Championship. She was playing in the European Individual Open Championship. And I thought that was just excellent to see her just uh, locking horns with the world's best. Now, as I mentioned, her rating is a little bit on the, the low side for her, but she still is the rating favorite, 25.53. World Cup winner and she did that with ease and in this position it looks like she has easily equalized as well don't see any problems whatsoever with her position in fact I would actually say that I prefer Goryashkina because she just has the bigger flexibility with her pieces the knight is great on c5 for white but I am a bit scared about what I call creeping chess which is when one side goes h5, they slide the king up to g7. And I've seen Karpov and Kramnik do this on occasion. And then they kind of swing over a rook to h8, h4. And suddenly you find that white has to defend on two flanks, the king side, the center, and maybe even the queen side on some occasion. Ultimately, Salimova is still rock solid. There's nothing wrong with her position, but it's not easy for her to generate an active plan. Yeah, I agree. I would rather have black here. And the main reason is um, the queen side pawns locked on a4 and a5. I think what white wants to do is put her pawn back on a3 so she can play b4 and try to soften up the queen side with b4, b5. And in this position, if white does play b4 eventually, which seems very likely since she just played rook b1, She's going to be left with an isolated a pawn and it's not time for white to worry yet but i'm a little bit worried about the time situation uh Goryich keen has been playing super quickly and equalized very easily um, i think the big difference between this position and the last positions we saw in this game was the trade on d5 uh where black got to get space in the center and get a nice pawn on d5 um so that basically stops white from playing e4 with advantage, uh, which was one of the ideas before. Now it seems like b4 is the idea, but you still have to take some time to get it in. And as you said, black can play on the king side with the queen and bishop battery attacking uh, g3 and h2. And not only have I seen Karpov and Kramnik do that, as you mentioned, Komsky likes to do that too. He likes this kind of pawn structure for black. And I've seen him play h5, h4 on occasion. Yeah. I even saw okay, but this this one only this plan only works if this bishop is not on g2 if it's kind of been traded off. I even saw Alpha Zero do a, a plan which involved h5 putting the king on h6 and then going rook to h8, rook to g8, g5, and then just uh, advancing <laughs> as much as possible on the king side. It's uh, there's some beautiful uh, chapters on this uh, in the game. I think in the 
a YouTube video by Matthew, Scrum Master Matthew Sadler and mm -hmm. Natasha Reagan. A very creative idea there from the Silicon Monster. But Rook to E8 played and Goreshkin is saying she's not worried about B4. Instead, she's just going to be focusing on the center. Hang on, I was on the wrong move. Rook E8, Knight C5, G6, Rook B1. Last move and now Goreshkin thinking whether she needs to be worried about B4. I think it's actually not anything to be worried about for the time being, because you can meet it with B6, right? Yeah, we have to watch out for Knight A6 with the fork. Yeah. Um, but depending on what Black does here, then then we don't have to we don't have to worry about that. If we uh, played something like Queen E7, then uh, then B4 looks a little sketchy. Yeah, B4 is just simply going to be met by B6. Mm -hmm. And this bishop is eyeing up both the knight and the bishop. So Goryeshkina, she is completely fine. Shall we go back to the bird's eye view and take a look at the game between Humpy and Leiting J? Mm -hmm. so we'll just uh, bring it up. And there it looks again, the C pawn is missing. So it looks like Humpy went for it with the idea of C5, because when we left it, we were leaving it at uh, the following position, Bishop F4, H6, and C5 indeed was played. This was the computer's top choice. F takes C4, C takes D6. And uh, now there is pressure against D6. Bishop takes F1. D takes E5. And what do we think about this? Well, now if my students ask me, why did they play King H1 and King H8? Now, now it makes sense. So mm -hmm. they, they saw very far ahead. The king would be worse on G1 on the open diagonal. The black king would be worse on G8 because that diagonal also can get open. Um, and I like, I like white's position, except I, I'm worried about the D pawn. I'm wondering if that's going to be an asset or a liability. She just played d6, so we're going to find out. The, the knight on e4 is excellent, blockading the e5 pawn. Um, the engine seems to think that it's a, approximately equal. Maybe black, white's a little better. But practically, I would definitely want to have white here because I like my d pawn more than my opponent's e pawn, and I like my knight on e4 better than the bishop on g7. So I, I prefer white in this position, but... Probably that's just my personal preference. I'm sure that Black has played actually very well after C5. So the yeah. White gave up the two bishops, but she she has nice blockading knights. She does. And also one thing with this pawn on D6 is that it can, Black can start to play around it as well because this knight, I've had this done so many times by Kings Indian players. They either put the knight on F5, on D4, but either how, he can go via C6, or f5 it doesn't matter a knight will find itself on d4 and then they start to try to destabilize the protectors of d6 with bishop mm -hmm. to f5 and again if white is able to consolidate white is probably doing very well and i think it's got a more comfortable position and there you see knight to f5 indeed played but if black is able just to get the forces going then black will have full dynamic equality with an active knight and a powerful light squared bishop so roughly equal do you think yeah it, it's roughly equal i i prefer white just because i'm white in a king's indian usually and i think for a king's indian player having the two bishops and having the d4 square as you mentioned for the knight they're, they're not going to be very unhappy I think both sides are playing excellent chess this game, and it's always been about equal. And I mean, obviously, Humpy has less time than her opponent. Uh, I'm not sure what move number they're on, but uh, hopefully that won't become a factor with uh, Li Tingche having so much more time than her opponent. It might become a factor because they're only on move 19. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, let's go back to the bird's eye view because there are two games that I am desperate to keep an eye on. And I can see that it is uh, 
the game between Tan, Tan Zhang Yi and Anna Muzichuk. That's the game I would like to have up because when we left it, we left it at a critical stage. Knight to d4 was played by Tan Zhang Yi, and Anna had an difficult, difficult task ahead of her of coming up with moves to stay alive in the game. That's right. And we, the Vaishali game, which is also quite interesting, we haven't seen any moves from Vaishali in the last 20 minutes or so, but we have a couple of moves in this game, uh, making the position more interesting. Um, as was mentioned, I think by you, G, G5 was played, um, stopping all these sacrifices on G6. But it looks so scary for black. Yeah. And this is where you I remember you saying bishop c3, rook a4, just go f4. And yeah, f4 is... is the most active move. It does undefend the d4 knight a little bit, but only temporarily. Yes. I know, but it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? F4 start uh ask the questions to the the pawn on g5 h6 looks absolutely terrible queen c7 maybe but then again it's a risky business because i mean maybe let's try queen c7 so many potential sacrifices which i probably don't need <laughs> yeah Okay, so what, what's the first sacrifice that comes to mind? Now you're mentioning let's, let's, them. I haven't, let's, hadn't let's, seen them. Let's play knight. Actually, if we play knight takes e6, you might take my bishop on c3. Hmm. Okay, so let, let, let's go on knight takes e6. Okay, so, so first up, let's have a look at what happens after pawn takes knight. Then, then queen takes. Queen takes. Uh, on, on e6. Okay, yeah. Rook f7. Then and then f takes g5, attacking the rook. And... It doesn't like my f takes g5. Darn. It does. It oh, it probably it probably likes bishop h7, probably. Yeah, okay. Bishop bishop h7 looks very good. That's, That's probably what it idea. Likes. Yeah, it likes that. Yeah, you can't you can't take the bishop because of uh the rook falling. And now you can probably go. Yeah, now I like f takes g5 more. Yeah. F takes g5. No. No, it doesn't like my moves. No. I'm oh, threatening everything. Is... Yes. But okay, maybe my, sec my the... second choice is bishop g6 then. <laughs> Aha, the, I think the reason is because then there's some checks on c5, mm -hmm. followed by the rook swinging across. Oh, so I didn't bishop see rook g6. h4. Yeah. And again, we still have issues with a check. And my second choice is also bad. Okay, my last Why? plan is queen h6 check and e6. And then I give up. <laughs> no. Uh, queen h6 check, also no good. Okay. So let's let's find out why f takes g5 is not good. So f takes g5, it must be to do with maybe the bishop coming to c5 check. Mm -hmm. King moving to h2. And is it the rook swinging across? Well, what is the... What is the wonderful defense that saves it? Because this looks just absolutely devastating. I wonder if you can play rook on a4 to, to f4. It's a funny move. Ah. I don't know if it works, but it's funny. I don't think it, yeah, it doesn't work. No, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't work. So rook f4. What? This position seems so bad for black. Totally. Totally. So I'm like kind of curious. What, what, is, what is the saving resource that black has up their sleeves? So is it, so rook h4 is just going to be met by king to g3. Mm -hmm. And. Ah, yeah. is, it, is it this? It Bishop is. F2. Oh, the bishop, bishop on f2. c3 is hanging too. Huh. Uh huh. Yeah, so if rook f2, rook f2, that's, yeah, then black is okay. And then rook mm -hmm. takes rook. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> the no, 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 no. 
think probably you have to throw in another check and then right. take on f2 with the queen but okay this is deep stuff okay well we have a move we have a move let's go this back is, so this is why I, I, this is why i retired from chess this is too complicated <laughs> this is more fun <laughs> to watch and commentate than to play Playing's too nerve wracking. Okay. It's too complicated. It is. It is incredibly nerve wracking. But then sometimes we we don't have to go in for the flashy. Let's uh, pick the most simple moves. So after queen c seven, attacking this bishop. What is the least flashy continuation? Well, if I sacrifice my bishop, that's flashy. So I can't do that. I don't like knight yeah, b5 because that pins my pawn on f4. And it also allows a check, which may or may not be a, a bad yeah. thing or good thing. Or are we forced to go into it? We can go rook. We can we can do this. Rook f3. We can build. Mm. Although, ooh, oh, apparently, apparently that's loss. That's uh, I've even managed to turn it around. Why? I don't know. I just like White's position so much. What? Why? Why is something like that, like Rook E three? Ah, Rook E three is also going to turn it into something not that promising. That's surprising. Those moves look great. <laughs> that that is very surprising. What is the? Well, I, I'm going to cheat. Okay, it's because of this. Queen takes c3. Yeah. Bishop takes h7. Mm -hmm. Rook takes c3. And I didn't do a material count at the end of it. I just assumed that, uh, this, that there would be enough material, but there isn't. Boy, Rook c7 attacks so many pieces, but I guess you can yeah. you play Bishop c8. I don't know. Bishop c, c8 or Bishop c5, it says. Oh yeah, bishop c5 and is that's, also... Yeah. And that's three three pieces for the queen. Mm -hmm. And this is why it's bad to go rook f1, because then there would be some checks on or mm -hmm. the king would be a little bit more vulnerable. So you can't go rook e3, just because of simple maths, basically. So And, and then the next question is, like, just move the bishop back. This is also another... This was right. my other play it simple. I don't care. I'm not getting involved in knight takes e6 business. Yeah, bishop b2 seems quite good also. Because now the now the uh, queen isn't on d8 defending the e7 bishop. So if rook b4, I would definitely consider bishop a3 because I want to win that bishop on e7. Yeah, unless there's this, some business with queen c5 but now maybe with the rook going to b2 maybe we can oh yeah you're right queen c5 might destroy all my ideas but maybe now because it's the rook taking on b2 and the queen isn't active i really want to play maybe f5 now we can go... i want to play f6 now, yeah, now awesome. i want to go knight takes e6 mm -hmm. <laughs> And then now after pawn takes knight, queen takes rook f7. Bishop h7 again. Bishop h7 again. You can't take on h7 because this rook is loose, so you go king f8. But now it feels like there's going to be no... There's, there's not going to be any... Now I feel like you can go F takes G5. Because there's no queen takes C3 at the end of it, which was the mm. deep point. Mm, that's now we can go, yeah. we can go queen C5, king H2 here. And you see in the other line, there was some queen takes some funny, funny business with queen takes C3, not in this one. Right. And now it's it's game over. It's still super complicated. And there's so many tempting lines for white that probably don't work. Yeah. 
Because I want to deploy like Queen H6 check and E6, or even Bishop G6. Oh, instead well, maybe of maybe it's the case of everything. Oh, okay, yeah, I was just so Queen H6 was probably the same, and then and then the king goes to E8. Yeah, because because if I play E6, you're you're not th that four pawn is still there, so you can't play Rook H4 yeah. check. Exactly. Okay, so now this is also good enough. I I don't know what to do against this one. Um, I'm stuck, Ben. <laughs> yeah, this seems quite good for white also. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of tempting lines. I'm just not sure which one works because yeah. there's, there's too many computer defenses that I can't see. But it just looks terrible for black. Totally, totally looks terrible for black. But this was us playing it's very safe. So after a queen, a queen c8 played. Queen yeah, c8 instead of queen c7. Played. That's interesting. Yeah. And well, this is the issues. Maybe that defends e6 a little bit more temporarily. Maybe. Yeah. There's some knight takes e6 and then like knight c5 idea, pinning the knight. So I guess her intention is if bishop to b2, dropping back. Is there some knight c5? Funny. Is that any good? It doesn't look good to be. Isn't yeah, I, G5? Again, I don't know if I should take on G5 or play F5 and F6. I don't know. I, I'm not sure either. Okay, so let's go F5. because they, they both look so good. And F5 is not good. Yeah. It looks <laughs> F5 good. is not as... Well, I, we don't know whether... Oh, well, no, hang on. It's, it's going back up. So maybe it's recognizing that F6 is very dangerous. I mean, I don't see the response. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, it looks like white just has a mating attack and black doesn't have enough defense. Yeah, I mean, this is the only move that I can see, but look at that, the evaluation box. Yeah, never play F6. All the way up. <laughs> yeah, never play F6. It, it just loses. And yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Well, this one is heating up nicely, but can we go to the uh, bird's eye view? Because I just took a sneak peek at the game between... Katarina Lagno and mm -hmm. Vaishali. Vaishali did not find Rook to E3. So we've uh -oh. got to add there because look at that. So we left it at this particular position. Knight to F4, Rook E3 was the only move. Impossible to, to find. The game. Yeah, very, impossible. very difficult resource. Yeah. And here she went instead. Queen takes Knight, Bishop takes Knight, and now G3. And here, this position is just, according to the evaluation bar, just winning for black. Now, where is the killer blow, though? It, it looks winning for black, but yeah, we have to find out how to win right away. So I have a, I have a question. Mm -hmm. The first move that comes to my mind um, was queen d4. But maybe I should maybe I should check first on h3 and then play queen d4. I'm really happy my king's on h8 now. So I can play moves like queen d4, but maybe I should yes. check on h3 and then play queen d4. That's what I, there was, this was my first vibe as yeah. well. Go queen to d4, threaten, threaten, a, two, threaten yeah. a1. I did not see the defense. And I'm also threatening like rook c8 and your bishop is pinned. Just, just to add to white's misery. Wow. I can, I can keep attacking your bishop too. I can play rook c8 and then bishop d5. Okay, so after rook a2, you're just going to go rook a c8, right? That's what I was going to do, yeah. Yeah. I always rook miss these great defenses, but at least knight d2 hangs mate in one. So knight d2 is not a good defense. No, but knight to a3, I'm still somewhat in the game. I wonder if I should play rook f to c8 so I can play rook a to b8. Okay. Let's put that one on. I don't the board. know, but I'm just wondering because Rook B8 seems. No, 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 no. Let's let's try this one and then Knight A3, Rook then A to B8. A to B8. Okay. Without calculating, this looks terrible for White. <laughs> yes, it, it's it would be a miracle for White to survive this one. So Queen to Queen D2 Rook. seems forced, right? Queen then D2. I just take, then I just take the Bishop. Queen, rook takes uh, no 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 don't trade sorry. queens just play rook takes yep bishop. yep yep rook takes bishop 
Yeah, this is no fun. You have to go here. <laughs> then Rook, Rook B1 and the Arbiter says no moss. Yes, uh, the Arbiter steps in and says no more. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. No, okay. Okay. Wow. So Queen, so they're going back to the game position. G3. Knight H3. Queen to D4. This is forced. And I, I, th I think Rook, rook A2 forced. is forced. Is it Rook A2 forced? You're threatening mate and the Rook's hanging on A1. And unless there's some... Nope. I don't see any way to defend F2 and do a counterattack. So you have to go Rook A2. Rook C8. There's this one trick, but it maybe even doesn't work. So I was I was thinking if you allow, but the queen takes bishop is a check, you'll be. Right, so then you can play rookie eight check. I, I see your yeah, check. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't work. <laughs> I, I was hoping for, I can't even get to it, but I was really hoping to go after queen takes t4. Let's ignore the fact there's a check that rookie eight, mm -hmm. but no, it's really work because it's a check queen takes bishop so you have to go knight to a3 then i was playing rook, rook a, b8 here. and okay so maybe maybe move the queen up the board mm, yeah queen e7 yeah queen e7 but still rook takes c4 is no longer possible because of queens let's just put that up on the board rook c4 queen e8 and no. after rook takes queen there would be no the back rank always mm -hmm. be careful about the back rank so queen e7 instead i'm trying to find a killer blow mm -hmm. the killer blow is maybe you don't need a killer blow Yeah, maybe you just go h6 and you just mm -hmm. say no back rank today and look at your pieces and laugh, laugh, laugh. Because after queen takes pawn, you just got rook f8. Ooh, that's, that's nasty, rook f8. Wow. Yeah. Pressure against f2. And I don't see anything else to do because rook takes c4 is still in the air. This bishop doesn't yep. have too many squares. Bishop takes pawn. You're going to go queen to d3. You can't mm -hmm. re release the right. defense of this diagonal. So just go h6 and that's it. You've got a winning position. But we're going to leave it here and see whether Katarina Lagno will find the winning continuation of throwing in a check and coming in with the queen to d4. This is getting exciting, folks. So we are going to take a quick breather, but don't go anywhere because a lot more of the action is going to be on the other side of this break. See you in a few minutes. This April, intergenerational rivalries spill over to the chessboard. Face off against the boomers. Grapple with Gen X and the millennials. Or take on the young guns of Gen Z, Gen Alpha, and Gen Beta. And then the mighty Martin? Play them all on chess.com. I can guarantee that working your way through this course and solving all 1001 exercises will reward you not only with a greater tactical knowledge, but also with spotting more tactics in your own games. My name is Fiona Steil Anthony and I'm a Women International Master. I wish you a warm welcome to the course 1001 Chess Exercises for Beginners, authored by Franco Mazzetti and Roberto Massa, with videos by me. In this case, the knight on c5 is not protected, and so the winning move is g6. g6 is the discovered attack, but it is also a double attack, because not only are we hitting the knight on c5, 
we are also threatening mate on H7. In this case, rook C7. Black has no choice but to capture. And now our queen comes in. We've lured the queen away. Now the king is too far removed. It cannot protect the black queen. So we are going to pick up the black queen on the next move. Has this ever happened to you? Oh, shoot. Another mouse slip. What about this? Oh, well, holy bishops on passant. I think I'm getting carpal tunnel. If only there was a way to play online chess with a real life board. What if I told you, you can with Chess Up 2. That's right. With Chess Up 2, you can now play over the board online. Wow. Simply connect your chess.com account to our state of the art Chess Up 2 and get a game started. Every time you move, our revolutionary board will transmit the data online directly to your opponent. And as soon as they move, squares will light up, signifying which piece is going where. Well, shucks. This Hikaru guy seems pretty good. With Chess Up 2, mm. mouse slips and sore wrists mm. are a thing of the past. My carpal tunnel is gone. Well, this sure is fun. I'm playing online against my new friend, Hikaru. Who needs a family? But I sure do miss clicking on a piece and seeing all of my available moves like they have on chess.com. Well, Danny, you're in luck. This feature is totally available on the Chess Up 2 as well. Wow, well, I'm convinced. But hey, what if I don't just want to play an opponent online? What if I want to use one of chess.com's other great tools? I thought you'd never ask. With Chess Up 2, you can fully take advantage of the chess.com integration by playing bots, analyzing your offline games, and even using our optional AI assistance to visualize the quality of moves with color-coded hints. Well, holy f Chess Up, you did it. You made IRL Chess cool again. You got it, Danny. And how do you know my name? Play Chess today on the Board of Tomorrow. We are back and things are about to get juicy in the games, Ben, because if it's not blistering mating attacks, it is also drama with the clock because we do see participants, they are struggling with their clock times. And there you can still see in the uh, top left, you can see Lagno has found queen to d4 and we are expecting well, they're surely to be in serious trouble because knight to h3 check is in the air. So Vishali, there you can see the evaluation bar. Things are not looking good for her. But uh, moving to the top right, we can also see that Humpy, although her position might be balanced, yeah, the clock is mm -hmm. not necessarily her friend there. And in the uh, bottom left between Tang Zhongyi and Anna Mizichuk, 
we do see that queen c8 was met by bishop to b2 and then the knight came to attack the c the bishop on d3 but still not too much has changed there and uh, Mizichuk will have to find some tremendous resources in order to stay alive in the game but maybe we should uh, head towards uh, Salimova against Goryachkina because whilst we've been looking at it, one plan of uh, attacking on the king side has come into fruition. And we do see that the evaluation bar doesn't think that much of uh, Salimova's position. Yeah, that's right. And um, Goryachkina played queen e7 to prevent b4. And when she played h5, h4, Salamova played b4 anyway. So uh, I'm wondering uh, if I if I take on b4 and you take with the rook and I play b6, I don't know what you do there. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I see the engine says black has a great position, but yeah, it looks like b4 was like the only reasonable idea for white to push forward on the queen side, but maybe when she did it, it was ill-timed and also as you pointed out, some people are getting into time trouble now, and Salamova is one of those players. She has less than 13 minutes, and Goryachkina has about 40 minutes. So, And she did take on B4. Okay, so White quickly played A5, which I didn't look at, but the, the engine doesn't like it for White. It looks like Black might just be a pawn up at some point. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I was just thinking about B6 at the right time. Mm -hmm. Also, pawn takes h takes g3 is something that i was considering just you know with the Id eventual idea of like sticking the knight onto g4 just steam rolling through sacrifice and i don't know very worried about this open h line but you had to maintain the pawn i maybe you can go queen is b6 something yeah that's b6 what i was thinking anything yeah and then knight to a6. So I sack the exchange and get those two pass pawns? Yeah, probably Yeah. Not. I don't know if I do that. I could just play rook b7 and rook try to be a pawn up that way. Yeah. And it looks uh, like black's yeah. going to be a pawn up eventually. Yeah, totally. Because after rook c6, which I was banking on, I completely forgot that white has, uh, sorry, black has b takes a5. And mm -hmm. you're a pawn up, and these two little ones are very, very strong. So b6 looks like a good try for the advantage. And in, indeed, check in the engine. Yeah, b6 is the best move in the position. Also possible to go bishop takes knight, and uh, then head in and target the pawn on a5 with rook to a8. Mm -hmm. But b6, b5, Goreshkina is just going to be a clear pawn up. So things just moving slowly in Goreshkina's favor. Where else should we go to? We Ooh. definitely have to go to the Vaishali game. <laughs> yeah, let's head there. Because Katarina did something I, I didn't see at all. And okay, so we were looking... Really strong. Mm -hmm. Oh, very strong. Okay, so we were looking at this idea of going knight to h3 and targeting this f2 pawn, but uh, Katarina's just gone queen to d4 direct, attacking the rook on a1. So the rook moved to a2, and now knight to d3 with an attack against this knight on e1 and this queen on b4. This bishop is on prees. Oh, it's <laughs> loose. The time being yeah. as well, it's going to be it's going to be on pre. If you try to make a move like queen to d two, then uh, yes, it completely mm -hmm. is on pre. Also, let's not forget that the king is still really vulnerable, and if the queen magically transported herself to h three, it's going to be checkmate on g two. White has a lot of problems, but knight takes queen is a big problem, and you can't take the knight because the queen takes queen. So yeah, I I I, I know That's I'm supposed how... to I'm supposed to commentate and give you good moves for white, but um, I I don't see a good move for white. Okay, I I see one, rook okay. two d two. You found it. So then I have to just win the exchange. I want it to win more than that because I can take and play knight c two. That seems can... like I should get more though. Yeah. Okay. Can you go rook two? 
can you use tactics against so i was thinking rook to e8 one rook oh you want to e8. checkmate me yeah that's a good idea yeah this this one although as you can see the evaluation boss said yeah no. but rook, so rook, the take, idea rook takes knight be... defends the defends the rook on e1 yeah uh-huh yeah and what i was thinking i was thinking of being highly flashy with this move queen takes c4 oh wow that is flashy yeah that was very flashy but as you can see it doesn't actually get the computer seal of approval presumably because yeah i don't know why looks good to me uh maybe you can do your counter no Well, actually, because of this. Rook d8? Wow. Rook to d8, I know. is unbelievable. Wow, that's an amazing is, shot. It is absolutely stunning. So after rook takes, you just go mm -hmm. rook takes e8, and then we get into an end game like this. And this is just a draw. So spectacular mm -hmm. fireworks on both sides but mm -hmm. unfortunately not good enough so let's go to the exchange up end game and see how winning it is let's take the queen and play knight c2 let's take the queen and play yeah okay so let's get hang on let me just go back mm -hmm. take the queen I, I think it's very winning isn't it yeah that bishop on f3 is still a monster very very winning yes of course Knight takes queen, as simple as that. But then there's no other move. No, I, I like your rook d2 is the best move, but it seems like this ending is lost. But I, I still mm. like rook d2 because I don't, I don't like anything else. Okay, because so, otherwise the rook is falling. All of white's pieces are hanging, yeah. The queen I've never the seen fire. a game. The game is so deep into the game. It, it's a twenties and the knight is still on B1. It hasn't moved. Mm -hmm. And we're only on move 23. Wow. If there is a resignation before move 25, is this a min miniature? Mm -hmm. I would say yeah. so. Wow. And with the black pieces as well, Katerina Lagno looks like she is absolutely crushing through. Queen to d2. So queen to d2 just drops the bishop. And now the that's rook on e1 be... is attacked. Yeah, that's not good. And after rook to e3, attacking both pieces, at the very least, you have bishop to e4. And that's good enough. We don't need to calculate further than that. A piece up. Mm -hmm. Rook comes to d2. The queen is falling. Rick takes queen, knight to c2. Nothing to see here. Can this rook, can this knight get trapped? So for instance, she, she, no. she did play, she did play rook to d2. She did play rook to d2. Okay. She just played it, yeah. Rook d2, but knight takes queen. And rook takes Yeah, this d4, was played quickly. She, she quickly played knight takes queen and knight c2. Pretty confident yeah. Lano is. Yes. And things are finally turning in her favor. The last two games that she played, Lagno had winning positions. She had great advantages, but she couldn't quite manage to convert them. Mm -hmm. And today sees an end to that. And now Vaishali, with this loss, is going to move down to minus one. Hmm. And, no, and it looks so promising, right? For, for Vaishali, she played the opening quickly, but Katarina, she might have been surprised, but she handled it. Yes. With, with such a great reaction, Rook to D1, and now Knight takes Rook. Yeah, I would definitely keep my Bishop. So yeah, Knight Bishop takes so Rook. wonderful. It's a thorn and uh, she does. Yeah, Lano seems super confident that, uh, that she's going to win the game. Mm -hmm. 
All she has to do now is uh, trade off a set of rooks. Mm -hmm. Rook e8. Yeah, rook e8 is really strong. Rook e8 is what I, what I would play. Rook e8, trade of rooks, and then rook rooks can't get traded off because this bishop is catching the king in a mating net. Yes. Rook c1 is just simply going to be met by the rook coming to c8. Yep. Yeah, black's position is getting better and better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lagno has all the time in the world to enjoy this position there's that beautiful moment in chess when you know that you're completely <laughs> winning that you cannot mess it up <laughs> but uh, here is pretty much one of them rook to e8 get that exchange of rooks bishop on f3 is so good and she did play see? it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Vaishali, is it time now to accept that it's over? Or do you think she'll play rook f1? Because after rook c1, then rook to c8, and that pin. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't like that. Yeah. Get out of, yeah. But if rook f1, I guess you just go bishop to e2. Yeah, that would be the simplest because eventually we're going to win the a5 pawn. The extra, the rook against the knight is just crushing in this endgame. I always tell my students, if you sack the exchange, that's good in the opening and middle game. Unfortunately, in the end game, if you're down the exchange, that's not good. So this is no. going to be an end game down the exchange. That's not good. No, that's not good. No, I, I, I mentioned this a lot, but I think it's very important when you're down material just to not really assess the value of the pieces, but what they do. And uh, one of the things about rooks is that when they stand on open lines, they are worth their five points. When they're looking mm -hmm. at their own pawns, not, not worth so many points. Right. But look at this knight on B1. I mean, I don't think you'd give it even three points. You'd give it two. <laughs> and there Katarina knows she's got a rook, rook c1 uh, rook c8 rook c8 and it's going to be game over because not only is it setting up a, not only going to set up a pin but also you're threatening to go so say if you go rook a c8 mm -hmm. If uh, white makes the move h4 just for fun, you can just simply go rook takes bishop. Oh, that's a nice rook finish. Takes rook rook to e, e1 check, king h2, rook h1 checkmate. Rook she did play rook played. to e8. Yep. This is. And she finally defense. moved her knight. Finally, the first time in the game, she played knight d2. 92 yes well small victories right mm -hmm. be it uh, knight d2 unfortunately it can be met by bishop to d5 bishop to e2 trades are going to happen and in such an open position the knight is powerless against the rook mm -hmm. there you go bishop to d5 mm -hmm. yeah this is pretty hopeless it's over. It's over for Vaishali. There's some beautiful plans of just simply going rook c5 or rook c7, doubling on the c line, putting all the pressure against this bishop. And there's That's the it. handshake. Yeah. Yep, Katarina scores her first win, this time with the black pieces against Vaishali. But what a game there from Lagno. Yes. The way that she handled it, she, she was surprised in the opening, but that didn't phase her. Instead, she played very active chess. And it was a great reaction, the way that she came forward with the pieces. She utilized her pieces to their best. And in the end, Vaishali had one chance to find a magnificent defensive resource 
And unsurprisingly, it was just too difficult. Such a difficult rook to e3. Mm -hmm. No, very um, nice game yeah. from Lano. Surprised in the opening and just played great. Absolutely. Okay. So we have a decisive day, Ben. It's not going to be all draws like it was yesterday. <laughs> Shall not we? only that, but every single game is decisive so far. We have all decisive yes. games. <laughs> yes, they're all decisive. That's what we asked for. We asked for mm -hmm. some quick, decisive games. And let's go to the game between Tan Zhong Yi and Anna Muzichuk. Mm -hmm. Because Anna Muzichuk was in big trouble with the black pieces. And, and still is. <laughs> still is in trouble, right? Yeah, not only that, Muzichuk's clock situation isn't very good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how's she going to cover the light squares? Yeah, and if white plays e6, the dark squares are going to open near the king, too. Oh. Yeah, this is oh, not looking and... fun for black. Yeah, so h6 was the last move played by Tang Zhong Yi. Like e6, that. as Ben points out, lengthening the scope of this dark square bishop. And then we see bishop c8. Well, Anna is fighting. Yeah, I'd like to not have my knight pinned. My knight is pinned on d4. So I'd like to just move my queen somewhere so I have knight takes f5 or knight c6 as a next move. Yeah. It seems like that's the only thing black has is this pin on the knight. Where would you go? Would you go queen to g3? Would you go queen to h5? Those are the moves I'd be considering. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Just don't know which I don't know which one I'd go to. I like g3. I'm a little worried about knight e4. But maybe I shouldn't be worried about that. Yeah. I I was also concerned about that as well. So let's uh which one should we pick? We we've come up with a few queen moves. Okay, let's play Queen G3 and see how much the engine hates me. <laughs> okay. Queen to G3. And then it hates no, me a lot. It didn't, yeah, it's, it's it didn't like you. So no. I, I'm guessing knight to e4. Not, not for knight e4. Knight e4 would be a mistake. Uh, hmm. Interesting. We could trade we could trade bishops first on f5 and then play knight e4. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. But if you do that, then knight. Mm -hmm. Maybe let's let's take and then, then go knight to e4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, white's not crashing through like I thought she would. Okay. So so no queen to g3. Yep. So let's not go there. To me, e6 is still interesting. E6. I might, have, I might have to sack some material, but it's okay. I'm opening up my bishop on b2. Okay. E6, again, is very tempting. It's the move we want to be playing, so we should be following the Sam Shanklin rule, which is when you see a move you want to play, just do it, do it anyway. Bishop takes mm -hmm. E6, and what's happening now? Rook takes bishop. E6. Yeah, bishop takes probably. E6. Yeah, Bishop takes E6 is going to be the same thing. I, 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 no, I like, I like your Rook takes better. I like what you said. Okay, Rook, yes. Okay, Rook takes E6. Mm -hmm. And the big idea was that after knight takes e6, we just go bishop takes e6. And after pawn takes bishop, queen takes, and now the sleeping giant on b2 is released yes. because after mm -hmm. king h8, this bishop will come to give a check like that and win the queen. So least, you can't take yeah. everything. So after bishop takes knight you have to stand here and you have two pieces right you have two pieces for the rook this is happy days yes and this is a big attack also mm -hmm. at the least mm -hmm. so after e6 what what else can be done bearing in mind that bishop f6 i i can't suggest f6 so i won't 
Okay, I'll suggest F6. I, I, I will go there. <laughs> Look, it looks so ugly. <laughs> yes, it probably is very ugly. But I will go there for you. I'll take the hit. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. And now we can, okay, we have move E6. E6 yep. indeed played. Of course, Tanji is going to find the most aggressive move. And now we're looking at closing things down with F6. I'm so tempted to play Bishop H7, but I don't think it works. I'm just tempted. I'm, I was also headed in that direction as well. Bishop takes h7, king takes h7. Oh, the thermometer queen. hasn't moved. So yeah, No, it F5. hasn't moved. Okay, it's a queen f5 check. Mm -hmm. King goes to h8 in the corner. That's what I thought, yeah. And... I could go knight c6 and then take the bishop and then take on g5. That seems pretty good. Ah, uh, yeah. And you want to take the bishop? Yeah. Oh, I don't want to take the bishop. Okay, I thought I did. No, you don't want to. Apparently not. I could play queen g5 right away, but then... Oh, I'm threatening mate. Oh, okay. I didn't see I was you're, threatening queen g7. You're threatening mate. queen oh, g7 in a That's here? better than not threatening mate. Well, now rook f6 is the cool move. I don't know if it wins, but it's cool. It probably loses. It is. It, it's, it's cool, but... But then I guess you just go rook f8 and then pick no, up this queen. I was going to play rook f7 and h7 mate, but maybe I guess you could play d4. Darn. Yeah. D4 I wanted to play will... king g and h7 mate, but I can't do what I want. Okay, so here, yeah, okay, but we can just play it simple, right? Simple, simple is always yes. good. The simplest way is the best way. Always. Murphy's law, but I'd be. I was thinking bishop takes f6, bishop mm -hmm. takes, and then queen takes bishop, king right. h7, Thanks. and then... What's the killer blow? <laughs> Not so easy. Knight, knight to e7. Yeah, I was looking queen at knight e7 seven. also. Mm. What about queen, queen f7, Jack? But I'm, I don't know what I'm. I was thinking this. Mm -hmm. King goes because if you go queen takes queen, the pawn is going to stop. The pawn is going to promote. Oh, after rook f8, rook e8, you can't defend your rook. Yes, you, the rook is. I'll just put that up on the screen. I guess you can move the knight somewhere. Knight d7 or knight e6. Yeah. So if you don't take, mm -hmm. then you go back. Then I was thinking knight to e7. Yeah, this looks terrible for black. And uh, yeah, this e pawn is so strong, right? So if you go here, you can just simply go knight takes rook. Rook takes, whoops, 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 whoops. Mm -hmm. Rook takes, and then here, here. And you can even use your h pawn as a decoy. Yes. You can, can you do this one? No, you go rook f8. Yeah, rook I was going to play rook f8 first. H7. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's the most fun. <laughs> yes. Beautiful. I have to show off at times. Okay, so that was deep, but it was e6. We really went into the weeds there. e6 and f6 and bishop takes h7. And she hasn't indeed. moved after e6, and Anna only has four minutes on her clock. No. But, you know, it's hardly surprising when every single move that she plays f6. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Do you think we'll see bishop takes h7? I don't know. I saw bishop takes h7. I'm, sure, I'm still not sure if I should play it because, you know, it's, it's so complicated. But that's that's the kind of thing Tan Zhongyi does. She figures the complications out and then plays it. Okay, get this. So I cheated, and just to see whether Bishop takes H seven is the only winning move, mm -hmm. it is not the only winning move. Yeah. So Bishop takes H seven is the most convincing one by far on account of the line that we actually showed and we mm -hmm. came to the conclusion. But you can also play it simple with Rook to A one. 
Rook to a1 would be the professional way to play it. No yeah, I kept trying to unpin ever. my knight, and that's that's the way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And you can also go knight to c6. Knight to c6 is another way to secure a very healthy advantage because you're attacking the rook. The rook needs to move somewhere. Let's go rook f4. And uh, the, this knight just comes back to c6. And this mm -hmm. is just much, much better for white. white yeah. But there is the potential for the brilliancy. Bishop takes h7. And this, I know we were, we were mega deep here and we were assisted yeah. by the evaluation bar. King takes h7, queen to f5 check, king h8, because otherwise queen to g6 is going to be devastating. And now knight c6, as you indicated, with the whole idea of just taking on g5. So the mm -hmm. best move is actually to go knight takes e6. But here we just go knight takes queen and say thank you very much for the game. Yeah. I enjoyed it very much. Yeah, that's too good for white. Yeah, it's a critical moment. Rook a1, professional. Knight c6, professional. Bishop takes h7 in the realm of a genius. <laughs> Actually, to be honest, and everything wins. So Rook I have a question. I, I, yeah? I have a question. After bishop h7, king h7, queen f5, what if I play king h6? Yeah, then I was I was planning on just using my rook, mm -hmm. like rook f3. Then, then king g7. I'm going to play rook h8 when you play rook h3. Ah, that was my... Can we not do this, this business uh, yeah, again? Yeah, that's good business. Oh, I, that I was resign. that was excellent business. Yeah, I, I resign. <laughs> yeah, Queen um, G5 and is the reason then Queen takes G5 is just very, very yeah. good. Mm -hmm. And I hope she plays oh. Bishop H7. That's the most exciting. I I hope so too. And knowing Tan, I think she will. She has that kind of style where she embraces the complication. Anna is mm -hmm. down to three minutes. But the thing is, Tan's position is so good that she'll be thinking, do I need to go in for mm -hmm. this beautiful sacrifice where if I make a mistake, things might turn around. Maybe I can just play it normally with Rook to E3, Rook to A1. Yeah, this is a really exciting round because we're going to see some decisive games, very mm -hmm. complicated games this round, and and some of the players are in time trouble. Yes. Oh. Well, well, Tan has plenty of time to think about what move she's going to be making. Should we move on to another game? Because I can see that the situation has clarified in if you look between uh salimova and goreshkina mm -hmm. goreshkina is a pawn up yeah it seems like it's clarified they traded everything and she has the yeah. extra pawn and and probably has the safer king also is that enough to win you think yeah i would think that black should be winning black has a pass c pawn and the d5 pawn is so well defended white's White's bishop is thwarted so much. I, I would assume that with perfect play, black should be winning here. Yeah, but white's very active as well. So compens there's some compensation, mm -hmm. I would say, for the pawn still. And uh, when we go to the, the uh, top right between uh, there, this, this is the position that we were discussing. Salimova, she is the lowest rated tournament, uh, sorry, lowest rated player in the tournament. Mm -hmm. Goreshkina, the number one seed. Queen to b6, and it's black to play. So what does have the threat of going rook to c7 and pouncing on this pawn? 
And the question is, do you kind of go for the counteroffensive with moves like knight to g4? I thought the simplest Maybe. way to play was to just play rook c8 to stop rook c7 and defend the pawn some extra so my queen can start running around. That's what I thought too. But then, but then I got seduced by the idea of going knight to g4. I was like, <laughs> let's, let's head there. <laughs> <laughs> checkmates abound you know because i was thinking you know queen comes to f6 mm -hmm. tickle the f2 pawn the knight can uh, do some nifty defensive footwork on e5 yeah and also after and my rook, rook. rook c8 maybe bishop h3 is annoying so maybe your knight g4 is better yeah i, di I didn't see it. so rook c8 this is an important point bishop h3 mm -hmm. covering the g4 square and destabilizing this rook from the protection of c6. So, yeah. Oh, hang on. Let's. We've got to go back to the bird's eye view because mm -hmm. ah, I see the what sacrifice happened. was played. We've got to just uh, turn our attention. So, bishop takes h7 was played by Tang Zhongyi. She, she is on her way to getting a spectacular victory. King h7. Queen f5. And uh, now, as we saw, when the king steps up to h6, rook f3 is going to be devastating. And if the king steps back to h8, trying to use the pawn on h6 as a shield, then knight c6, unleashing the power of this bishop on b2. And this is just going to be winning for Tan Zhong Yi. What a game she's played. She hasn't played, she hasn't put a foot wrong. No, I agree. This is a fantastic game. I guess, I guess she's the deserved tournament leader right now. Yeah. And nice she would move to, cool. yeah, Knight C6 quickly played, unleashing a devastating pin. Big threat now of Queen takes G5. Yeah, white's pieces are all attacking. This is a really good example of getting all of your pieces working for you. And um, by sacrificing one piece, the, the white squared bishop, she really activated her dark squared bishop and black's position is, is collapsing. Totally, totally collapse. And uh, again, just to run through those lines, Queen must move. If the queen moves to e8, this is where we were looking at the move. Queen takes g5. This is Ben's suggestion. Queen takes g5, setting up bishop takes f6 ideas. That's as, it's as simple as that. And in fact, we checked with the engine and the engine said that black's best defensive try was to play knight takes e6. Yeah, I'm going to guess she doesn't play that. <laughs> no. <laughs> and sure enough, and sure enough, I did not see the knight move. I think, I think uh, queen to e8, judging from the hand movements, was played. Yeah, that seems very reasonable. Yeah, Muzi Chuk only has a minute left. Mm -hmm. And so we think queen takes g5 immediately after queen e8 is the best move. Yeah. Okay, there we go. And she played it. Queen e8, queen takes g5. She's not letting Anna off the hook whatsoever. Queen takes g5 played instantaneously. Big idea that after queen takes knight, there will simply just be... Checkmate on g7. Mm -hmm. This is the big point. Rook to g8. And now bishop takes f6. Check. And these two pawns are going to be unstoppable. A brilliant play from Tian Zhong Yi. Absolutely. 1000% from the way that she played queen to g4 she played knight to d4 earlier on such a sophisticated move understanding 
that what was way more important was that she simply bulldoze open Black's position. And since then, she's just been relentless. Rook g8, bishop takes f6 is what we're expecting mm -hmm. from Tan Zhongyi. yi But I like the way that she's taking her time. I wonder if Rook takes f6 also wins or just bishop f6. Um, well, Rook, yeah, we did see Rook takes f6 that the evaluation bar dropped. Oh, I thought maybe taking the Rook is better than taking the Queen. But maybe yeah, taking not. the Rook. Yeah, that this is the reason. Uh, that's why. Yeah, that we can't break yeah. through. Yeah. It's so tempting so to play that too. It is. It is. But once you see that bishop takes f6, check. Bishop mm -hmm. takes queen. And you see this whole concept that the queen can just simply come to f7. And this pawn is going to be so strong. It doesn't yeah. matter. It's irrelevant that black is material up. It is these two pawns so after king to h8 what were we look we were going queen takes queen takes e8 oh no it wasn't queen takes e8 what was it's like 97 ah yeah 97 of course knight to e7 with the idea of knight to g6 check g6 attacking this right rook mm -hmm. yeah it's just it's just white has too many White has too many tactics. We were looking at rook to g4 here, but was still losing. And then this was the beautiful point. But after this, you could go e7, mm -hmm. king g8, and then rook to f8. With the whole idea that after rook takes rook, you just simply go h7. You got decoy the king away from the defense of f8. So king to g7, now you can take the rook. And that's it. Game over. It's a beautiful, beautiful line. Queen takes g5. Threat of queen to g7. And so rook to g8 indeed played. And oh. Oh, she did take with the rook. She's gone. Rook takes f6. Oh. I think rook takes queen, but bishop takes rook is okay. Oh, bishop takes rook. And black is going to be absolutely fine. Maybe Anna can get away with this. It's so tempting to take with the rook. I don't I don't blame her for doing it. Yeah. No, it is very tempting, but uh okay, so Anna not so much time and only she has two moves to survive. Bishop mm -hmm. takes rook is one. D4 is the other one. Ah, D4. D4, yeah. Bishop takes rook is the best move. It says there the evaluation is 0. 0.00. Wow. And Anna, less than a minute, anything else, and Anna will be completely lost. So here's a chance for Anna to save the game. She has to find Bishop takes Rook, grabbing material. She has to trust that it's not going to be checkmate. And she does it. Wow, that's amazing. Because she played so perfectly the whole game. And then one move goes from completely winning to just equal. That's chess. Yep, that's chess. That is chess. That's why you never give up, because it's always possible to save games. The chess is so difficult. Passes. Yeah. And do you know what? Tan has to find queen takes bishop. That's the only move in mm -hmm. this position. If she goes bishop takes bishop, which isn't logical by any means, then actually Anna will be winning because after king h7, bishop g7, it looks very, very good. But then black can simply go knight takes e6. No problemo whatsoever. Well, after all the, the heartache that Muzichuk has suffered this tournament, now to be on the other side of it. 
That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, it would be fitting, right? To get some balance in that way. Mm -hmm. Because Anna has missed three wins, three devastating wins. And she must have felt so disappointed. So going back to the bird's eye view, we can see rook f6 on the board, but bishop takes f6 indeed played. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And remember, Tan Zhongyi must take that bishop with the queen. With the queen. Well, what an incredible turnaround. But I, I don't think it's still over. I think the computer is very hopeful with 0.00. But let's not forget <laughs> the players are on move 32. Anna has just over one minute on the clock. She still has to find some accurate defense. Yeah, I still want, wouldn't want to be black in this position with this time situation. It's still difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it is d difficult. And I guess the idea was after Rook takes F6, if she, if, if um, Musi Chuk took the queen, then Rook F8 check and Rook takes queen is winning. That's probably yeah. what Tang Zhang you expected. Yeah, I think, I think so. I think she just assumed that after Bishop takes Rook, that it would be absolutely fine for her, that the game mm -hmm. would just win itself. Okay, and we are back. And Tan Zhong Yi still left to make a decision. Do you think it's dawning on her that it's not as easy as it looks? No, I mean, when, when you play Rook takes F6 and your opponent takes and you start thinking for a long time, that means something has gone awry. Okay, so, so let's have a look whilst uh, Tan is considering queen takes f6, king h7, and now queen f5 is going to be met by queen to g6, and black has the threat of checkmate, so you have to take, rook takes, and now e7, and then this is the whole thing, bishop to d7, you, you give back material, but this knight is hanging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, black's a rook up, so white has to do something. Totally. E8 queen, bishop takes, rook e7 check. And oh, wow, Dan is going to have to really mm. <laughs> find some great moves. Yeah. She's going to have to find some amazing moves here to survive this one, and she does. But let's go back. Queen to f5. That was not the most natural of checks. What about queen to f7? Is, is that a possibility? Queen f7 check. And remember, Tan is a rook down. Queen takes f7. E takes f7. Rook f8. And here you can go rook e8. Mm -hmm. Knight d7. Oh, how comfortable would you play this? Or how comfortable would you feel playing this type of position? Not with either side. No. Yeah, I'm thinking about knight e5. Yeah. Yeah, knight e5. And then after knight takes h7, knight takes rick takes f7 and we have this situation mm -hmm. but wow suddenly it feels like it's actually black who has the more has the better chances okay so what's happened she's taken with the queen king h7 and now queen f7 knight to e7 played still very dangerous for tan Yeah, it's still an incredibly sharp position. Mm -hmm. Only actually, I'm, I'm seeing with the engine that there's only one move 
for uh -oh. Tana, for, for Anna to survive. Mm -hmm. And that is to go bishop takes e6. Anything else, she is going to lose. Wow. On account of knight takes rook. And only a minute on the clock. Only a minute on the clock. Bishop takes e6 is the only move. But you can't play she rook f8 because queen g7 mate. Queen g7 mate, you can't mm -hmm. just move the rook. If you move the rook somewhere up the board, then queen to f5 check is going to be wow. devastating. That's crushing, yeah. King takes h6, queen f6. And then the rook will come to e3 and swing across. Yeah, still a, almost impossible to defend with this time on the clock. Less than a minute. This is coming down to the wire. Bishop e6. And bishop e6 is still incredibly complicated because, oh, she's reaching. Yeah, she took her arm back when she thought better of her move. 35 seconds. Oh, rook e4. And here, this is insufficient because Tan will just simply play queen to f5. She can play rook takes rook. But queen a5, f f5 is going to be winning. Mm. Yeah, queen f5 looks hard to meet. Yeah. Rook takes rook is also sufficient. So say let's go rook takes rook, which is played. Mm -hmm. And then the whole point is that after knight takes e4, you're just simply going to go knight takes g8. This is the wonderful point. Wow. Wow. Queen takes knight and now queen f7. And wow, the pawns. Amazing. The pawns will just simply promote incredible, incredible moment here. Knight takes rook. And we're expecting Tan to play knight takes rook. Yeah, and if king takes knight, we have queen f7 and then take on f7 with check and then h7. Just found it. Wow, and h7 wins because you can't stop the pawn. Yeah, you just cannot stop. Yeah, in time trouble, that was, it's a lot easier with engines. <laughs> Chess is a lot easier when you have engines helping you. <laughs> it's also a lot bar. easier. It's also a lot easier when you're not actually in the heat of the moment. Yeah. I've, uh, when you're calm about it, when you have, no skin in the fight. Rook e4 was pretty logical because it, it blocks the rook on e1. It gets the knight to the mm -hmm. e4 square, which is a good square, but it just doesn't work tactically. Now, knight takes g8. This is what Anna missed with just seconds left on yeah. her clock. Knight takes queen is just simply going to be met by knight takes knight check, and the queen is dropping. So Anna instead goes for queen takes knight, but here, queen f7 is just devastating. Mm -hmm. Previously, I said if king takes queen f7, but queen queen g7 and queen h8 was mate. So king takes was ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good, a good thing I'm not playing. I'd hang this is it. Mm -hmm. This is it. Anna has resigned. Tan Zhongyi gets her wow. third victory wow. and moves into a very comfortable lead. What a game from Tan Zhongyi. Super exciting. Almost perfect, almost flawless performance there. <laughs> Kept us entertained, full of excitement, as you say. But there are more games to consider, Ben. So let's mm -hmm. head there. So where should we go? If we go to the bird's eye view, shall we go to the game between Humpy and yes. uh, Leiting J? Mm -hmm. Humpy down to the minute. And the players are on move 32. Yeah, the evaluation bar hasn't moved very much this game. Um, the game was really interesting, but it always said it was about equal. Yeah. It's, it started off with a surprise, the King's Indian defense. And from then on, it's just been a full-blooded fight between the pair of them with dynamic equality and 
now we have this end game. Who do you think stands better? No one. Yeah, it looks pretty equal. I don't see um, with the opposite color bishops and both kings could get checked a lot. It doesn't seem, it seems like black has a past e pawn, but it's blocked like by everything. And I don't see white entering black soon. If we could switch the bishop and queen, okay, then we're threatening queen h7, mate. That seems impossible to do. So it seems pretty equal to me. Yeah. And there's just no way through for Humpy because somehow if she could anchor this bishop on g6, then she'd be able to come in with a queen to d5 and start causing some mischief towards the queen mm -hmm. side pawns. But this bishop is loose and wherever it steps to, it will be taken by the knight and you don't really want to be putting on h5. And if you come to knight to g4, it doesn't really do that much. The queen can take a step mm -hmm. back to e7. Also, it's black's move in this position. Mm -hmm. As black's move, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Something as elementary as that. It's funny, I'd, I'd rather have white here, but I'm imagining that I could change my mind like any move that I would be like, okay, now I want to have black. It depends yeah, I was on wondering what happens whether, later. I was wondering whether Lei could just get fed up and force things and go E4. Just force the matter, get rid of the C, C3 pawn. Mm -hmm. Activate that seems, that seems pretty drawish to me, yeah. Yeah. No, no, this is not an aggressive try. This is just to... <laughs> I guess if I wanted an aggressive try, I would move the queen to e6 and start targeting a2. Mm -hmm. Potentially. Yeah, and queen e6, I think, threatens e4, cutting off the, the queen and the bishop's defense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, now I like queen e6. Go queen e6. Queen e6. Well, you're not threatening anything though. Queen e6, I can drop drop black the bishop to e4. Mm -hmm. And then you have to be a little bit careful, right? Because it's often said that the queen and the knight are the perfect duo. And bishop f8. Always play bishop f8. That defends it's, the it's knight, so now the black queen can start running around. Exactly. Exactly. Anchoring the knight, the queen can come into f2. Again, no aggressive intentions. You just want to get enough activity to secure a perpetual check. But then on the other hand, knight to g4, this queen is not coming in. And I was just kind of thinking back to a bishop coming back to e4. If we ever get a situation where it's queen and knight versus queen and bishop, then there's chances for the knight and queen because they can start working on the light squares. So bishop f8, Humpy's made a move. I... Yeah, I thought I saw her make a move also. Yeah, I, I thought I saw that as well, but the board hasn't caught up with. And just trying to make, trying to check the cameras. Yeah, I think Li Cheng Shi wants to get her bishop to c5 so she can start attacking White's king, because the bishop on g7 was pretty passive. Mm hmm. Yeah, and maybe come up with a king to g7 as well, just to dislodge this piece. But, uh, aha, so I think I, I see it from the camera that uh, Humpy mm. did go knight to d5. So this mm -hmm. is what happened. Yeah, I wanted to play queen f4, but I guess white doesn't want black to play queen f4. <laughs> yeah. And now queen f2. That looks aggressive. Yeah. It looks aggressive and I, I for sure would be headed in that direction if I were Ling Tinjie. 
and she has roughly four minutes on the clock. We'll wait for the live board to catch up with the action. Oh, hang on a second. Let me just go. Yeah, Queen 95 Queen of Two did happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Probably Lee Ting Chi is playing for a win because she has, you know, a lot more time on the clock and probably figures her position's not worse. Yeah. Well, it's very tempting, right? Your opponent's got 26 seconds on the clock yeah. and it's move 33. And her king, ah, uh, Humpy, she's offering a trade of queens. If the queens come off, what do you think? Yeah, that's pretty drawn. It looks but, pretty drawn, but um, do you think there's any chances whatsoever for eking out a small advantage? Probably if I had to pick a side with the queen trade, I pick black because white's queen side pawns are, are isolated. Yeah. On the other hand, black's king side pawns are isolated too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, also the black king is going to be faster to the center. That's right. There's a, there's a few. But then yeah, I guess I, I pick black if I had to. Yeah, I have to pick black if I have to pick a side. Well, it's decision time though for Ling Leiting J. Well, what can she do other than trade queens? Her e5 pawn is hanging with check. Yeah, there's now you say it like that. She does a trade mm -hmm. of queens, knight takes queen, and what now? King G7. Mm -hmm. That's the move I think I would play without hesitation. Yeah, King G7 makes sense. Get the king up the board. Ah, she played e4. e4. This is a nice move as well. Ah, very nice move. Idea of bishop to g7 and start targeting immediately this pawn on c3. And now, again, humpy to move, less than a minute on the clock. And we're only on move 35. Yeah, if, if I think if, if there's black to play and black plays uh, uh, bishop g7, probably knight f5 draws. Yes, I was wondering whether knight f5 could be a response now. Yeah, knight f5 now is also interesting. Maybe even... She did play that. She did play. Well, tantamount to a draw offer. Knight takes knight. It would be opposite, bishops of opposite color. But they can keep the game alive if she goes knight to b5. So maybe the best would have been actually to go a4. But Yeah, this seems like, yeah, yeah knight five. five. I, I like this move. Yeah, this is still tricky with so little time on the clock. Totally. <laughs> with the e-pawn <laughs> ever inching closer yes. to its promotion square as well. But the players are on move 36 and c4. I guess knight c3 now. Mm -hmm. And she played knight c3 quickly. Yeah, black can play um, black can play bishop c5 and push that pawn. Well, also the a pawn is indefensible. Oh yeah, I thought white would just save the a pawn, then I would try to queen my e pawn, but I didn't realize the a pawn can't be saved. Yeah. Well, the engine really likes black now. It doesn't like knight f5 or c4. And Humpy down to 20 seconds. And she's going to bring in her king. She's reaching for the king. Mm -hmm. Knight takes a2. Um, 
Or are we going to see bishop to c5 check first? I think yeah, bishop to c5 good. check. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, this. It's amazing the a pawn just got trapped by the knight on c3. Yeah, it was this knight f5 move. I think Humpy was, mm -hmm. because of the time trouble, she just wanted to quite naturally force the situation. And this did allow knight to b5. And suddenly, white's queenside pawns were in a pickle. It's knight c3. King to g1, bishop c5 check. Take the pawn on a2. Yeah, the, the past A pawn's pretty strong. It, yes. Well, we yet to see, though, whether this is a, a winning advantage, because even though Black will have that past A pawn, because the E pawn will fall. Yeah, that's true. White has to really go after that E pawn. If Black has two past pawns, she'll just win. Mm-hmm. What do you expect? Do you you know, think in this, in this position, black could play e3 also. Yeah. But then that allows, no, knight takes a2 played. Mm -hmm. Okay. That seems well, like a very sensible move yeah. with the time situation. King f1. Knight g3. Just go immediately for the e-pawn. But the thing is, though, can black keep the e-pawn alive? You just go bishop c5, you go e3, and then. Yeah, it might take quite a long time a to win the e pawn, and we can push right. the e pawn. And, yeah. when, and when a king comes to e2, you just check it. Knight c1. So this is. King the, yeah, king f2, so I'm thinking bishop c5 check. I can mm -hmm. put it on the board. Yeah. And then once the king goes here, so I think you can just keep this configuration because then all you need to do is make a random move. And then when white tries to win this pawn, like like this, you can just go knight c1. Mm -hmm. And this is just going to be winning for black. Yeah, that's that's winning for black. Knight c3 might even be better because it controls b1, so we can queen our a pawn faster. Mm -hmm. But it's it's winning, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So we could potentially see four decisive it's, results. It's possible. I would not write this one out. Whoa. So I thought the pawn on e4 would be lost it turns out that actually no a5 played yeah, a5 is very much the same pawn. idea yeah. Yeah, she wants to go the after king to e3 she's simply going to go knight to c3 and just cover the e4 pawn and make sure that everything is protected some excellent play there from Lei Ting J. she might even ignore her pawn and just play a4 a3 and try to queen her a pawn that's hard to stop that is very hard. I mean, this bishop on g6 is so badly placed. Yeah. What move number are they on, Yofi? They're on move 39. Oh, okay. So. so one move away, knight to e3 played. Humpy has made her 40th move. Oh, she played ninety three. Yeah, I think she played ninety three. The uh, the uh, live board hasn't hasn't caught on yet. Oh, knight g three. Sorry. Oh, okay. Knight g three, and you're right. She is just going for promotion. The a pawn is well on its way to queen. Yeah, that pawn's difficult to stop. And they finally made time yeah. control. Yeah. They have made time control. 
And this is the beautiful point, as you, you mentioned, Ben, that if the bishop captures the pawn, the knight can just step out of the way and then the A pawn will continue marching. And mm -hmm. the light square bishop is totally powerless. Wow. Bishop takes E4, just to put it up on our boards, knight C3, and again, bishop goes to C2, you just go A3. And this bishop will have to sacrifice itself in order to prevent this pawn from queening. Then Leiting J will be a piece up, and that is relatively simple to yes. win. Whoo! What a turnaround. It looked like a very balanced game. And then in the time trouble, Humpy tried to force the issue and it all went terribly wrong for her. Unexpected. Well, we wanted four decisive results and we're still in the running. <laughs> we certainly are. Oh, wow. And on that note, I think is the perfect time for us to go on a short break. We're going to catch our breaths. We're going to refill our cups of tea. And then we are going to be with you to catch up on all of the action that is going to be coming your way in a few minutes. Looking for some cool merch or a gift for that person who loves chess? We've got you covered in our all new merch store, literally from head to toe. Whether it's a hot date or just hanging out, it's always chess time somewhere. Just ask Mittens. Okay, well, Mittens is just a stuffed toy, so maybe don't ask Mittens, but you can check it all out at chess.com slash shop right now. I chose to play the Sicilian as my main weapon with black about 35 years ago, e4, c5. c5 is an excellent move that controls the d4 square, and when white plays d4, we're ready to capture it. This is, of course, on the Sicilian, and I think it's a really good opening for beginner and intermediate players. A lot of lower level club players only know e4, e5. You'll have excellent chances out of the opening, and I chose the variations carefully based on my own experience of playing the Sicilian. Knight b five we play queen b4 now our queen can escape to a5 which defends c7 it looks good to fork the pieces but after king d8 all of white's pieces are attacked so knight takes queen takes c3 check attacking the king we're gonna take the bishop next move black has an extra pawn and this knight is trapped I'm Gotham Chess, and I'm about to film the most extreme chess challenge I've ever done. I'm gonna be playing four games at the same time, and every kid is gonna be armed with a giant super soaker gun. Let's see if I can win all four games. Okay. Why did I sign up for this? This is like extreme sports. Oh my gosh, I can't even see. These two are like really brutal. I feel like I haven't even been attacked on that side. Why are you all defending your kings? Like, just let me win. Okay, all right, that's fair. I'm gonna be so excited when your water guns run out of water. I'm just gonna like <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, how about you all do it at the same time for like 30 seconds straight? Hey, 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 it is mean, yes. <laughs> How does she still have water? Oh my god. <laughs> Checkmate. Good game. <laughs> For some reason? Well, that means he probably enjoys chess, right? For some reason. No? <laughs> that was so fast. I'm down to two boards. <laughs> How do you still have so much water? Okay, no problem. Okay, yay. Ah, I had a feeling she was lying. That's checkmate. Good game. I can sacrifice my queen. I'm just saying, I don't so mean. Ah! Good game. You lasted the longest. 
I'm trying to shake your hand. Woo! That was very fun. Thank you for volunteering. You know, actually, I feel like getting revenge. <laughs> <laughs>
And here we do have the game of her compatriot, Leiting J, who has the advantage, a big advantage, a winning advantage against that uh, Humpy Canaru. Humpy spoiling an equal position in time trouble. So, any chances for Humpy in this particular? It looks like the best she can do is uh, somehow sacrifice uh, one of her minor pieces, probably her knight for the A-pawn and play this piece down ending, but I don't see a lot of chances of that ending for, for White. So I think uh, I think we're going to see a decisive result here. And unfortunately, it looks like Time Trouble got the best of Humpy this game. Yeah, and we do see Knight takes E4 being played. And, well, I thought that wasn't necessarily possible because of A3. I thought A3 and then this Knight on A2 would you believe it? It completely dominates this knight on e4. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so rare that that happens, right? We talk about the knight in the sense of being the octo knight, but actual fact, it is the a2 square that is the most important. And then you can just simply step away with your own knight and then go a2. Clear the path, a1, unstoppable. Yeah, again, I think white has to try to sacrifice a piece, maybe knight to d2 with the idea of um, knight to b3 or bishop b1 just to stop yeah. the pawn from queening right away. But it's going to cost white a piece um, sooner rather than later, and I don't, I don't see any chances in that end game. Yeah, this is knight c3. Is there any hope in maybe trapping a knight? No. I and uh, if if a knight comes to b3 and you know white wants to sit there on b3 a2 and then this bishop will also come either to g7 or it can even snake its way to a3 and b2 and yeah if black yeah. is quick enough black can play bishop g7 and then put the knight on c5 then the game's over i don't know if black's mm -hmm. quick enough to do that but maybe yeah well let's let's see have a look so if white says this knight is leaving the board in exchange for this pawn on a2, let's instead just target this pawn on b6. How does that work? So I'll go run, run for the hills. Yeah, and I'll still just play bishop g7 and I'll put my knight yeah, on, bishop. try to put my knight on c5. And bishop g7 is an important move because it prevents this king from running to my destination and mm -hmm. I cannot get through. I can go here, king to d3, but you just move your knight out of the way and you yeah, I'll play knight, knight, I'll play knight a4 to c5. Yeah. Big threat of knight c5. So I, wherever I go, I get harassed. No, this is just, even if I'm forced backwards, then now you can queen or you can even go knight c5 and mm -hmm. that's it. Game over. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't yeah. look good for, for white. It looks like black should should i mean the best white can do is sacrifice the knight for the pawn and in some some positions you can't do that so she has to figure out a way to do that to go into the the lost piece down end game and then she has to suffer in that end game also mm -hmm. well, we see a3 being played and now knight d2 what is going to be happening knight to d2 yes and she's going to go, we actually might see what we had on the board because I'm anticipating knight c3. Yeah, and if if black just wants to win a piece, black can play knight c1 and then after bishop b1 play a2. But maybe black mm -hmm. wants more than that. Knight c3 makes perfect sense, right? Because yeah. you threaten a2, you control the b1 square. So the bishop can't sacrifice itself. So the only way to do anything about it is to go knight to b3, a2, and then your idea of going bishop g7. Again, this knight and this bishop just coordinate so beautifully to prevent the white king from ever encroaching on this b6 pawn. And then you have this idea of knight a4, knight c5, game over. Yeah, it looks wow. very difficult for white. Mm -hmm. 
Well, this position is looking very difficult for whites. Let's go back to the bird's eye view and have a look at our another remaining game, which is between Salimova and Alexandra Goryachkina. Let's take a look at that one. When we left it, Goryachkina had a pawn up and the queens were on the board. The queens are no longer on the board, no. but she still has that pawn up. Yeah, black has an extra pawn and also white has doubled pawns. The F2 pawn is under pressure. So again, with, with perfect play, I, I expect black should be winning this position. And uh, not only does black have all those advantages, uh, 40 minutes for black, 12 minutes for white. And there's no time control to get to. So Salamova is going to have to play the rest of the game very quickly. Yeah. Uh, and how to even set up a defense. I guess white will just be shuffling, right? Rick A7, we wait. Yeah, I was wondering if black could try to play the knight to D7 to C5 to D3 and attack the weak F pawn. It takes a long time, okay. but maybe it works. So knight to D7, okay. Okay, so let's just wait, just. okay. Well, you stopped me from playing knight c5. Oh, you didn't. I can still play knight c5. Yep. <laughs> I have 94 check. Oh, you have no, 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 because it's the check. Rook takes you six. Oh, check. Rook takes his check. I'm so glad I'm not playing. <laughs> Just as hard. I can't play my idea now. You you tricked me. No, no, no. You can go. You, I'm sure you can wait, right? I was just suggesting a random move. Okay, so so let me let me put it let me go rook to b7 though because I I wasn't paying too much attention. I was just shuffling my rook, mm -hmm. and now you now the dream is to go knight c5, and then the rook c7, and then knight to d3, knight to d3. Boy, there's I'm worried there's a tactic here. I just don't see it, but I'm worried white has some some trickiness with his pins. Yeah, I was I was looking at bishop takes d5, but that doesn't quite work. Um, well, you can't take this. There's there's some issues here. You can't take this with a rook because rook takes c6. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I can just attack you. Yeah, you're always thwarting my ideas. My my mm. ideas don't work. Yeah, probably that was a silly idea getting the knight to d3 because it it's it's like a one trick pony and it seems like white can do something about it. even your rook c7 was pretty good but uh okay i don't so rick so rick to, uh, just rick to a7 hang on i was i'm going i'm using the back button it's mm -hmm. coming close up to one o'clock that's when things get a little bit dodgy for me <laughs> and i can't make out the the front the forward key the back key okay so this is the position you were going king king e6 rook a7 knight d7 and i think this is fine rook c7 where, where to put the pieces so i kind of don't we want the knight on d6? Yeah, I, I decided while you were doing that, I should play knight e8 to d6 so I can push yes. my c pawn. Yeah, d6 is a really okay. good square for the knight. So let's let's uh, move the knight to e8. e8. Yeah, because I really want to play knight d6 so that I can, knight f5 is yeah. annoying and pushing the c pawn is annoying. Exactly. So let's let's get that in operation. I don't see what white can do though. Uh, other than you can throw in a check, but I guess I'm going to be going f5. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe f5, maybe provoke f5. Bishop comes back. And yeah, this is annoying actually, right? Although. No, I play c5 because I'll play knight d6 when I have to. Yes, 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 yes. Knight c5. And. A C pawn could be dangerous eventually in a couple of moves. It looks very dangerous. Um, because after rook a6, you're just simply going to go knight to d6. Yeah, 
Well, some like the opposite happened of what I suggested. So <laughs> the knight the knight went to h5 instead of to e8 or d7. It's gone the Again. other way. The king has gone to f3. And now what will happen next? I don't know the idea behind knight h5, although I must admit, I don't like the king on f3 because it blocks the bishop. So maybe this is where black wants to play c5, c4, c3, because the, the d pawn not under attack by the bishop. Okay, so if we go c5 now, this rook comes to b6 check. Yeah, if I had my king, my d pawn's weak. We could play rook d mm -hmm. d file. Yeah, so c5 is probably too early. So it's like white's pieces are tangled on the king's side, but I'm not sure how to take advantage of it. I, it's a tricky one, isn't it? And I think I think I understand knight h5. I think she was afraid of like moves like f5. Okay, so knight h5 check, king f3, black to play. We need a move. How to improve? And yeah, the knight on h5. I don't, I don't like the knight there, but I'm not sure where to go. No, I don't. I don't like the knight either. I kind of wanted to. For me, this should be on d d6, mm -hmm. where it protects absolutely everything. And plus, oh, she and she played f5. And she's played f5. Mm -hmm. Okay. That f5. wasn't really on my radar, so. No, but also now this knight is saddled on h5 because otherwise the rook can swing over to g7 and start harassing. Right, but, but she, maybe, can play, maybe... she can play knight f6 and then knight e4 threatens mate. Yes, yes, yes. And if I go bishop to f1, and then knight f6. Right. Ah, and then she comes knight to g5. G4. Well, I'd like to play knight E4, but yeah, knight to G4 also. Yeah, I was just thinking if the bishop came to D3, you could just mm -hmm. attack it once. Right. Wherever the bishop goes, knight G4. Right. Yeah, it looks tough for white. Maybe this F5 yeah. idea is great getting the knight to G4. Yeah. Or E4. Now suddenly it looks really, really tough. Okay, so how to... And if, if I, if rook c7, you just go knight f6, mm -hmm. bishop. <laughs> no, I have to go here. I have to go here. I'm not convinced, by the way, by white's <laughs> play, my play. <laughs> Maybe now I should play knight e8 to d6. Mm -hmm. Although I don't know. I'm wondering about the rook and pawning too after knight e4. Can you can you come knight to g g4? Oh, that makes uh, sense. Is there some is is there some issue with maybe there's some issue with rook g7? Yeah, and then if king f6, we play rook c7, threatening the d pawn. Rook c7, and then threaten the d pawn again. Mm -hmm. Oh. This is really subtle, this end game play. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can't go knight to g4. But then if we go knight to e8, sorry, knight, sorry, king is, that was a mistake. King, 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 to g, king to g3, like white has to be incredibly accurate here. And, and, and just to confirm, what is the rook and pawn end game like? Do you think that's a win or do you think I don't know. I think the white bishop is so bad that we should yeah, uh, try to avoid that. Okay, I have another crazy idea. I'm going to give up my g pawn so I can queen. So we'll play c5 
in this position. Mm -hmm. And then you'll check me, I guess. Yeah. And, and then I'll play king e7. And then mm -hmm. you'll check me again. And I'll play king d6. Yeah. You'll play rook g7. And, and I'll, yeah. play C, I'll play c4. Okay. Oh, 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 rook g7 hangs the rook. Never mind. Yes, yes, yeah. Hi, you, hi, okay, we're not to okay, H5. Now I really, now, now I really like my idea because you can't play rook g7. Yeah, I just want to clean no, no, my no, c pawn because I... the king and bishop are so far away. So I have to go rook a7. Can you not just go for it? Yeah, I can play c4, but you're going to check me to h6, I guess. But I'm also wondering whether you can take it into now, take it into rook and pawn and game. Mm, no, mm. no. The yeah, I'm going to lose my g pawn. Yeah. yeah, I was banking on your c pawn being incredibly quick. Like I thought maybe you could even go like this. Mm -hmm. And then just escort the c pawn. So rook check and then rook takes g6. Yeah, so rook takes. And then I have rook f6 next move, so I can win the f pawn with check. Yeah. Oh, that's a pity. Okay. Okay, so one can't do that. But okay, hang on a second. If you just go like this. Right. Then white just keeps checking. Yeah, but I can, I can, can I live on the bottom row? Mm -hmm. Yeah, keep checking. Oh, hang on, hang on. Yeah, you keep checking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was planning to run all the way to h6. That was right. my hiding place. Yeah, I would keep checking and then play attack the knight with something. Maybe rook, eight, yeah. rook a6. Well, this one, definitely white has some resources. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, go to the other game because okay. that it looks absolutely hope, hopeless. Uh -oh. And I'm thinking that we're going to be seeing a result pretty soon, judging from the position, because there, Black's last move is just to go knight c3. Yeah, what do you do now? Uh, yeah, exactly. What what did White just do? Can you go back a couple of moves? Yep, I can I can definitely retrace the steps. So actually so we left it here. A3 mm -hmm. was played. Right. Knight came back to D2, and this is where King to G7 happened. Bishop came back to B1, Knight to C3, attacking this bishop. It's a big threat of knight takes bishop followed by this pawn promoting. So the only thing that I can think of is this bishop needs to clear the way. Right. Yeah, so we could play knight so b3 still. Somewhere, somewhere like this. a2, knight to b2. And here the most important thing is that you just prevent the king from running over to catch the b6 pawn which you'll do but somehow this bishop should be on on g7 right yeah i still want to play knight c5 somehow with my bishop on that diagonal yeah let's play yeah let's get to that position then let's What's play the... uh yeah bishop c5 check yep okay then, to... then i'm gonna play bishop d4 Yep. And then I'm going to play knight a4, knight c5. Mm-hmm. King goes to d2. And then knight a4. Knight a4. And then knight c5 is my next move. Knight c5. Nothing. I cannot catch the pawn. cannot catch the pawn so this was uh knight b3 bishop c5 check this is the game position this is what we're expecting king mm -hmm. e1 and using this lovely idea i mean 
is there anything that else to do? I guess, I, I guess white can play knight a1 and bishop b3 after bishop okay. d4. But I, pretty, pretty I, pathetic, I but you, you got to do something. Yeah, and then the idea is bishop b3 and bishop takes pawn. And just be down mm -hmm. a piece. Okay, so here you have to go. But hang on a second, you can go knight a4. Right, you don't have bishop... to put your knight. Well, yeah, then bishop b3. Because the, the big thing was, I was just arguing after here, mm -hmm. here just to put it out that after bishop b3, this king right. is on a dark square. So there's a check. So hang on a second. So this means the king can go on a light square. So let's put the king here. So just for mm -hmm. fun. So there's no checks whatsoever. And now we still want to play bishop e4, mm -hmm. knight a1, only move. And now we can go knight, but now the knight, knight is Knight e one yeah. You can't bishop play bishop b3. b3 as I can. Actually, you can go, can go knight to d2. This ending is, is, yeah, but the trading of the pieces makes it an easier win. Like taking on uh -huh. b3 and taking on a1, that's, yeah, queening, that's going to be an easy win. Yeah, I mean, black's winning. We're trying to find a defense for white, but I don't think there is. Yeah, or some way, to, some way for black to go wrong, but it doesn't seem like there's anything in the position. And just kind to refresh and see if there's a move. Knight to b3. No move from Le Tingye, but she has lots of time, 20 minutes on the clock. Remember, the players do get that 30 second increment on the clock per move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're, we're still but in the realm. Nice we're still in the realm of four decisive games. It's still possible. I think it's very possible because actually, if we kind of flick between the other game as well, because Salimova's just played bishop to h3, which, as we saw in our analysis, it was really important that the bishop is on g2 to mm -hmm. cover e4 square. And so now after bishop h3, surely she can go knight f6. So I guess her idea is rook g7, and then I can take on g6 and f5. That's her idea. Yes. But it, it, hang on a second. Is she, is she not going to lose a piece? She loses a piece, right? Uh, Rook takes g6, I, king f7. So. You you have to I, move I, I, over. I'm, I'm still not sure. Then king h5 after rook. King h5, and then we have knight. Yeah, but, mm -hmm. Isn't this going to be Oh, that's a, that's a funny mate. That's a, that is a funny mate, yeah. Yeah. Knight, As, just knight g3, show, check, g3 check also wins, but this is cuter. <laughs> oh yeah and then the king comes to g5 and the mm -hmm. rook comes to h5 checkmate yeah but um i wanted, to, I wanted well, a game... course on checkmates and since then i i, I really enjoy putting I mean, them after, on the board after bishop h3 if white can't do that this game is going to end quickly then white yes. just black just plays knight f6 knight e4 that was a big mistake to go bishop h3 because we saw that in the analysis that because we were trying in this particular position, we were trying some rook move, random mm -hmm. rook move. And then this knight came here, and then the only move was to go king to g3. Exactly. Yeah. To keep the keep the g the e4 under control. If she goes bishop h3, there's no way she can get e4 under control. So knight to f6. But Goryeshkina has to spot that. Yeah, knight f6, knight e4. Yeah, it's just too strong. Knight f6, knight e4, pounce on the f2 pawn. And it's going to be a checkmating attack if she doesn't look after her king. That variation we looked at seemed forced. It seems like the game is just over now if she plays knight f6. Mm -hmm. Unless there's some trick we're missing, but I, I didn't see any trick. 
I'll check. Is there is there anything that we're missing? The evaluation bar tells us no, no. and the engine says no. The I assume that, that, was, is, that was her point, was to play rook g6 and bishop f5, but it just loses. There's this this idea, mm. which we, we didn't look at. But here it just laughs and says you can go c5 because you can go g5. You can go into that end game. And G, G, G5 yeah. seems pretty winning. After G5, we're three and G4. It? And then we, we're two pawns G5. up in the rook ending. Yeah, and we're just. King you know. F4, rook takes E2, and then rook takes F2, and then you, you throw in rook to G2. And no, C4 this is this is just remote. easily winning. Yeah, this is nothing. So, yeah, we. Ben, mm -hmm. it's thanks to you. We got. Four draws yesterday before fighting draws, and today <laughs> it's swashbuckling mode with uh, potentially four decisive results. Yeah, it looks like four decisive results today. And Be better, more than yesterday. <laughs> three victories with the black pieces as well. Yeah, I Which didn't notice that, but yeah, that's amazing. Is entirely unexpected. So whilst we're anticipating for Goryashkina to play knight to f6, maybe we go and revisit the game between Humpy Kanaru and Lei Ting Jie. Mm -hmm. This looks like it's over. Yeah, white's going to play, or black's going to play knight a4 and knight c5, and that's it. Nothing to be done. White I'm trying to sacrifice a piece for white for that A pawn, but I don't see how to do it now. No, maybe. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, maybe the king can come to E4. Nope. Maybe the king can come to D. Nope. Uh, I, it was just a series of unfortunate events for yeah. Humpy. So everything went wrong, right? She put her pawn on the wrong square. Her bishop was on the wrong square. Her pawns. And uh, she plays C5. See. Interesting. That she's trying to stop knight C5 by playing C5. That makes sense. Yeah. The problem is now the piece up ending is a piece up. You don't even have a pawn for the piece. That's true. Like I could just take on C5 and Queen. I'm up a piece for no pawns. Yep. So that's that's not good. No, it's not good. I don't have to queen. She... I can queen whenever I want. So yeah and um, okay so let's take the pawn and i guess mm -hmm. humpy's idea is to go king to d3 right uh oh i found another way to win that's even better knight to d4 oh. so knight b5 knight to b5 yep the knight d4 yes. and then i make a queen oh you can't stop my pawn you can't even play knight a1 and bishop b3 because my knight on d4 defends b3. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's hopeless, isn't it? Knight. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm. Yep. And she did okay. play, Hang on a second. They're, they're playing the line that we suggested in Salamova's game, knight f6, rook to Okay, so, so let's head there, and you can see knight f6 on the board, rook to g7, and now it is... Okay, so, so this is getting exciting, but we're going to stick with Humpy because it feels like this is going to be the end. Yeah, and... it's only a question of which game is going to end first, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> And so let's, <laughs> it's a race between these two. And we love to catch the handshakes. Now we can't predict which one will finish first. Mm -hmm. So C5 played, B takes C5. You think she'll call it a day now? Well, after you knight, knight B5, I don't know what to do. I'm going to get a queen for nothing. E3. I think black is going to promote without white being able to sacrifice for it. Yeah. Sacrificing for it is still losing, but there's different kinds of losing. There's a piece down losing and there's a queen down losing. So the queen mm -hmm. down losing isn't good. No, no, queen down losing is, that's, is that's just worse. bad. Yes. 
Well, loss is a loss, however it happens. I mean, I, I know some people who thought it was a bit more dignified to lose on time, but I was like, no, a loss <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> you still got a zero on your score sheet. But yeah, here, unfortunately. I can, I can also play 90. I can play 92 to play knight d4. And if you take my knight, I play c4. That's also quite funny. Oh, but that's, that's just sadistic. Knight yeah. d2, king and takes if, me. Then you can't play knight a1, <laughs> bishop b3, because I defended b3. So that's funny. Yeah, you, you got it all covered. <laughs> and that's a beautiful line. I, I would smile evilly if this happened. That, that's uh, worthy of the finish, knight e2. Well, I think she'll knight play knight b5. E2. I think she'll go knight to b5 as well. But I I don't know. Lei has a sense of humor. No, no, knight to b5 on the board. Knight d4 is coming, and this pawn is unstoppable. And that's it. We have a handshake, and Lei mm -hmm. Tingje wins her first game. Wow. And Humpy Kanuru, it just went wrong in time trouble. And so she moves down to minus two. Humpy will be looking to make a comeback in the later stages of the tournament. But Leighton J played an excellent game, full of fighting chess. It was very even throughout until time trouble when Leighton J hit. So that means one game is outstanding, and it's between Salimova and Varyashkina. And well, we recover from that victory that we saw. We're going to take a very short break and don't go anywhere because we're going to see more of this game between Salimova and Goryashkina when we come back. Looking for some cool merch or a gift for that person who loves chess? We've got you covered in our all new merch store, literally from head to toe. Whether it's a hot date or just hanging out, it's always chess time somewhere. Just ask Mittens. Okay, well, Mittens is just a stuffed toy, so maybe don't ask Mittens. But you can check it all out at chess.com shop right now. I chose to play the Sicilian as my main weapon with black about 35 years ago. E4, C5. C5 is an excellent move that controls the D4 square. And when white plays D4, we're ready to capture it. This is, of course, on the Sicilian. And I think it's a really good opening for beginner and intermediate players. A lot of lower level club players only know E4, E5. You'll have excellent chances out of the opening. And I chose the variations carefully based on my own experience of playing the Sicilian. Knight B five we play queen b4 now our queen can escape to a5 which defends c7 it looks good to fork the pieces but after king d8 all of white's pieces are attacked so knight takes queen takes c3 check attacking the king we're gonna take the bishop next move black has an extra pawn and this knight is trapped I'm Gotham Chess, and I'm about to film the most extreme chess challenge I've ever done. I'm gonna be playing four games at the same time, and every kid is gonna be armed with a giant super soaker gun. Let's see if I can win all four games. Okay. Why did I sign up for this? This is like extreme sports. Oh my gosh, I can't even see. These two are like really brutal. I feel like I haven't even been attacked on that side. Why are you all defending your kings? Like, just let me win. Okay, all right, that's fair. I'm gonna be so excited when your water guns run out of water. I'm just gonna like <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, how about you all do it at the same time for like 30 seconds straight? Hey, 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 Yay! <laughs> I play this. It is mean, yes. <laughs> How does she still have water? Oh my god. <laughs> Checkmate. Good game. For some reason? Well, that means he probably enjoys chess, right? For some reason. No? <laughs> that was so fast. I'm down to two boards. Ah! 
How do you still have so much water? Okay, no problem. Okay, yay. Ah, I had a feeling she was lying. That's checkmate. Good game. I can sacrifice my queen. I'm just saying, I don't so mean. Ah! Good game. You lasted the longest. I'm trying to shake your hand. Woo! That was very fun. Thank you for volunteering. You know, actually, I feel like getting revenge. <laughs>So whilst Alexandra Goryeshkina is looking to close out the day with a win, earlier on, Katerina Lagno did exactly just that. So our very own Mike Klein caught up with her. Let's have a listen. Guys, we're here with Grandmaster Katerina Lagno, who just not notched her first win against Grandmaster Vaishali. Were you more frustrated or relieved that you finally got your first win today? Well, of course, you are relieved when uh, when you win. Uh, finally, you win the game. But uh, I, I, as I told uh, someone in my previous interview, that well, you, you need to be precise when you have good or winning position. It's so till the end, and I wasn't, and so that's why I didn't win before. Everything was in the balance, and then you found this knight f4 idea. Tell us, uh, how did you find it? Well, I felt that the position is uh, very dynamic, so I, I have to be, I, I need to play uh, f as fast as I can, and I try to, to find some, some aggressive moves. So that's how I came up with this idea, taking on b2 and knight a4. And actually, the, the main point on the, the whole problem of her position is knight b1 that never moved, and so that's why, of course. She, uh, well, she, she had to play some cells before. There you go, kids. Make sure to connect your rooks. Uh, we always say when you play against youth or kids that they're really good at tactics, but you were better at tactics today. So do you kind of feel like uh, the kids have something to learn from you? Well, <laughs> I don't know, really. Just uh, no, just it was not the best game from her today. But I think she, she, I played her before, and she was good in tactics and in other, uh, in en endings. And so, just maybe it was not her day today. So, but she will, she will improve, of course, her play. Thank you, Katerina and Mike. And yeah, Katerina Lagno winning stunning game against Vaishali. You heard it there. Tactics. Connect your pieces, connect your rooks. And in the meantime, there is one game remaining between Salimova and Goryashkina. And let's take a little, let's trace our footsteps and see how the game continued. Because when we left it, we left it with the knight coming to f6. And we thought that this was just great for Goryashkina. 
We just thought, yeah, the knight just comes to e4 and it's resign time. But she found a defense, right? She went rook to g7, knight to e4, rook takes g6, check. And once the king steps back to f7, not bishop takes f5 on account of rook takes f2. And indeed, that is either going to end in material lost or checkmate for Selimova. But she found rook to g2. But there is a problem here. And that is these two pieces are extremely passive. So all Goryashka needs to do is consolidate her position, make sure this pawn on f5 is defended. And she does exactly that. Rook h2, c5. And just note, this rook, as Ben pointed out to me during the break, just cannot move. The bishop comes back to f1, c4. The bishop is indeed locked out and rook to d2. Any hope for any defense, rook h1? Because as it stands, it, no, it feels I mean, like most of c1 can just walk up the board. Right. There's two things white can do, rook, rook h1 to c1 and also rook um h6 to c6 but uh, in either case the rook's gonna run out of squares on c6 once i play pawn to c2 i can play king d7 and your rook has nowhere to go um, on the c file and so, so let's try this one getting the rook active at least okay that's so king e7 king anywhere is mm -hmm. good okay rook c6 just and because I'll push, the, I'll push the pawn to c2 Yes, and I have no, no idea what to do other than wait. You can't move I your bishop. Move bishop. You, no. you can't even wait. Waiting is hard to do because my your rook is getting trapped on the C file. Okay, I have to go here, and then you, then it's, you're going to go C. king. C, like king I'll play seven. C two first. I'll play C two first, but it doesn't matter. Then I I attempt to wait, and then the king D seven. King d7 and you can't knight. play bishop b5 because you get mated in one bishop b5 rook takes at two with the hook mate so yeah you don't want to be doing that but then the alternative is you have to give up the rook for the pawn and that is going to be game over every single day so nothing to be done except instead of putting the rook behind the pawn maybe you can try the other way it looks miserable. Rook h1. Yeah, I play the same way. C3, C2, and then my knight goes to C3 and A2. Yeah. Or I guess I could go to C5 and B3 also. Yeah, C5 is probably more accurate to stop the bishop coming from D3 because you just want to prevent the bishop mm -hmm. from giving itself up for the pawn and having to work another 50 moves mm -hmm. to win this one. And knight c5, knight to b3, you dislodge the rook. And yeah, that looks very, very convincing. I mean, what else to be done? And uh, Salimova now under two minutes on the clock. Yeah. And it's mission impossible here. No, it looks like we're going to get a clean sweep today with four decisive results. And as you pointed out, uh, Black's winning in three of them. So real fighting day of chess. Yes, and also it means that Goryashkina is keeping head to head with Tanjong Yi, just half a point behind her. So everything's going to be set for tomorrow, round seven. So Rick h6 and now king to e7. What a beautiful move. King e7 with the idea of just simply advancing the c-pawn. This bishop cannot move on account of rook takes f2, check. And then this rook, despite appearances, doesn't have too many squares along the c-line. Maybe she that's... can go rook h5? Maybe that's another rather than... Now I'm thinking about it. Maybe just keep... I'll keep pushing rook my eight... c-pawn. <laughs> That's pretty quick. Oh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it is, isn't it? I, I, need, I need to steal this pawn from the board and then come back to here to mm -hmm. H1 without you realizing. And of course, yeah, you'll be vigilant about that one. Um, okay, what happens if I keep checking? So let's let's just check. Uh, I'm just gonna. 
Okay, I'll put my king on. I'll play king d6, king c5. King d6. Mm-hmm. King here. King c5. King c5. And then I have another way to win. When my If my king is defending c5, I can block the rook with knight c5. Let's push the pawn, c3. Okay, I guess I have to go rook c8. Yeah, You're probably going to take a step back. I can just go to d6, yeah. Because another winning idea is knight c5 and then queen my pawn. Yeah. It just feels very poetic. That's why I'm finding this position so amusing because, okay, forgetting about the emotions of the players, it's it's quite funny actually that like you step the king up to c5 and then ironically enough, you just go back. And this rook still doesn't have too many squares along the c line. And so this pawn will just advance to c2, king to d7, and the rook has to move. And rook h7 check, king to d6. Looks like we are predicting the outcome again. Rook h6, king c5. And another game that just turned on small advantages in the middle game, rook h6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, blacks, black, white's king and bishop are just so tied down that white can't move anything and black has this beautiful pass c pawn so in, th in this particular position the knight is dominating the bishop which we don't see too often but that happens also mm -hmm. yeah bishop cannot move on account of rook takes f2 check and this pawn it's so simple but it's so beautiful as well we'll just advance and i, I could I'm I'm waiting for my board to catch up with the cameras because we can see rook h6 played. Now the king just quickly moves up to c5. Do you think Sanimova will throw in the towel? Somebody has to give her a towel that she can throw it in. Yeah. It's a very strange expression, isn't it, when you think about it? Throw in the towel, like, <laughs> where did it come from? It, it comes from uh, boxing. In boxing, when if your boxer's losing and you're the you're the trainer, you can throw the towel and that means you're they give up. Ah. So it's it's when it's when a boxer should give up, but the the boxer never gives up. So they just mm -hmm. keep getting hit. It's the referee's job to stop the fight, but if you throw in the towel, then the match is over. Ah, okay. And you learn something new every day. Thank you for that. I love these little bits of information. King c5 from Goryashkina and now she, she 28 seconds. Yes, Rick h, Rick h5, but c3. It's like they knew we were discussing this line. Yeah, but there is one trick. Salimova is being very tricky, right? I, I don't see the c trick, so she could trick me. No, there's no trick. There's no trick because this knight can just come back to, I thought that maybe she could snatch on F5 and then come back to F8 or F7 mm -hmm. and uh, try to skewer. So it's like you go C3, rook takes C5, C2, and then rook moves to F8. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unfortunately, knight D6, I think it's rid of tricks. 96 gets rid of everything and yeah the pawn is marching c3 rook takes f5 but it's a nice fine final try from salimova yeah maybe she'll play rook rook f7 instead of rook f8 yeah rook f7 i think although then i play king d6 and you can't check me on f6 yeah yeah it's hopeless yeah Rick takes f5. C2. Yeah, the number of pass the number of pawns isn't important. It's how far advanced they are. Because white's a pawn ahead now. White has a pass to f pawn, but the pass c pawn is gonna. Yeah, and there we have <laughs> resignation. Mm -hmm. And it is a clean sweep. We have had wow. four decisive games this round. Goryashkina wins with the black pieces and she moves to plus two. 
What a round, Ben. It's been absolutely scintillating, absolutely thrilling. I could not have predicted it. Two victories in the end game two blistering attacks against the king wow we were hoping for four decisive results but we got what we hoped for and the games were all super exciting as you said it was a great round of chess yeah we had it all didn't we we had two games that was short and sweet and spectacular in every kind of way and then in the time trouble things went wrong for our two defenders, Salimova and Humpy Canary. And there we do have a shakeup in the standings, just as you predicted right at the beginning of the show. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, again, I'm hoping that we have some interesting, decisive games. And even though the games were drawn yesterday, they were still really exciting. And today we got a, a real bloodbath. You don't, you don't see four decisive games out of four very often. No, you certainly don't see that. Which result surprised you the most, would you say? Um, before the round, I I probably would have said um, Humpy losing with White, because she doesn't lose with White very often. Um, and her, and Li Ting Shi wasn't having a good tournament. And I was also surprised Vaishali lost with White. Um, but yeah, I mean, Nothing really is too surprising in this tournament because all the players are so strong and any result can happen. It's just surprising when all the games are decisive, but it was exciting for the fans. And I guess some of the players are super happy and some are not. That's that's chess for you. Yeah, uh, for me, it, it, it was a surprising town of events. I didn't expect Vaishali to lose so quickly with the white pieces, just a bad day at the office for her. But Katarina Lagno was relentless. Tan Zhong Yi putting on almost flawless performance. And then Lei Ting Jay just recovering to win in the end game against Humpy Canary. So let's take a look at how today's action has impacted the standings. Still at the top, it is Tan Zhong Yi with four and a half points out of six. Alexandra Greshkina on four points. But now only Katarina Lagno is there in third place with three and a half points out of six. Still early days, still very early to, were too close to call at the minute lating jay clawing her way back to three points do you think there's going to be further movement tomorrow ben on the tables that is that wouldn't surprise me at all i think the players are out for blood this is the the, the last round of the first half of the tournament and you want to finish the first half strong and it's the it's the last round where they're going to play people that they haven't played before this event so i i expect just as much excitement the next round maybe not as many decisive games but you never know yeah and uh, of course once round seven finishes we've crossed the halfway mark and here are the pairings in round seven katarina lagno will play nurgle salimova alexandra grechkina will have the white pieces against tan zhong yi tang Jing zhong yi is in the lead she's playing the number two anna muzichuk well she had a tough loss today and now she will play humpy canary who also suffered in today's game leiting J with a bounce back victory will play Vei Shali. so what can you expect between alexandra Goreshkina and tan zhong yi a battle between the leaders do you think they'll play it safe or do you think they'll go all out for the win I, I think they'll go all out, especially um, Gorechkina, because she has half a point less and she has the white pieces. And that would really finish off a brilliant first half if she can beat the tournament leader um, in round seven. So that's that's the game to watch between the two leaders, Tan Zhongyi in clear first, Gorechkina in clear second. Um, and Tan Zhongyi has to defend with the black pieces. So she can really put distance between herself and the field if somehow she can win with black, but I think Gorich Kina has different ideas in mind. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I agree with you. I can't wait for tomorrow to happen. Well, what a day it's been full of brilliance, full of suspense, full of action. Ben, it's been an absolute 
privilege and pleasure to be sharing the screen with you and commentating all the games. I look forward to doing it again with you soon, hopefully one day. And I'd like to thank everyone at home for watching and joining in on all the fun. And tomorrow I'll be commenting all the action alongside the one and only FM James County III. So you don't want to miss it. See you tomorrow.